meeting of the Plaquemines Parish Council to order at 1.06 p.m. Can everyone please, the machine is open for roll call. Councilmember Bartholomew and Burt. Let the record reflect eight council members are present. Councilmember Edgecombe is absent. Please rise for the prayer and pledge of allegiance. We take this moment to acknowledge Almighty God and thank Him for our bountiful blessings, especially for this parish's natural resources. We give thanks to God for our brave and courageous men and women in our military who daily risk their lives to protect our precious freedom, and we pray for our world leaders to know how to obtain world peace. We pray that this government body, comprised of both council and administration, will always serve our parish with honesty, humility, and equality to all, and for the wisdom to know right from wrong and the courage to do that which is right. And as this government body gathers here today, we pray that we will be spared from all harm and destruction this hurricane season. Amen. <clears throat> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I'm going to make note of the deferrals and withdrawals on the agenda in case anyone's in the audience waiting to hear a specific item. Item 4C will be deferred, 6B, 6C, 6E, and 6K will be deferred, and item 7G will be withdrawn. Does anyone have anything other than those items? Item 4C will be deferred, 6B, 6C. 6E and 6K will be deferred, and 7G will be withdrawn. Okay, we're going to pass over executive session to the end of the meeting. Let's move to item 1B, please. A proclamation declaring August 14, 2018 as Walter Brooks Day in the Parish of Plaquemines. Councilmember Roussel? Yes, I'll offer it. That's for unanimous second. Yes. Second. Yes. I'll offer it. That's for unanimous second. Yes. Got it. Yes. And uh, is there anybody in the audience from the RPC representing them? If not, we can just go ahead and pass this, and we're going to offer this uh, proclamation at Tuesday's RPC meeting at the headquarters. Uh, in New Orleans, not so we don't have to read it today here, but we will uh, read it and present it Tuesday. That's fine. Okay, machine is open for the passage. Let the record reflect the proclamation passes unanimously, eight to zero. We'll pass over the status report by the president. President Cormier isn't here yet. Let's move to item two. You're waiting? Okay, we'll pass over item two. Let's move to item three. Beer and liquor license. Mr. Badali? Beer and liquor license? No. Mr. Black? No. Mr. Lapine? Yeah, two. <laughs> uh, <coughs> excuse me. The Plaquemines uh, Parish Citizen Police Association on August 24th at 13629 Highway 23, Bell Chase, Louisiana, special events permit. And I have another one, uh, Mark Bergeron, uh, 161 Marina Road, Port Sulphur, the, the Murder Road Marina for October 6th. Did you know? I have none. I have one for the Beers Volunteer Fire Department. It's a car show fundraiser to be held September 22nd from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Physical address of the event is 35410 Highway 11. Mr. Roussel? None. Mr. Bird? None. Ms. Salvan? I have none. I'll offer those. I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Lapine. Machine is open.
Okay, Ms. Baldwin, please. Thanks. Uh, <coughs> yes, sir. Yes. Excuse me. Okay, thank you. I think last time we had a, a question about the uh, of three, the construction. Uh, and Mr. I'll just say if anybody else have any questions, I don't have a problem just moving forward with Global because it was okay by our attorneys. Everything is in order. LV says it's perfect. Everyone's okay with that? Okay. Okay, good. Thanks, Mr. Bartholomew. 4A1, IGP Methanol LLC application number 2018-529, dated July 20, 2018. Drill nine soil borings and four temporary monitoring wells for the IGP methanol plant, Myrtle Grove Area Council Member Trufant Salvant. Number two, Southern Earth Sciences, Inc., application number 2018-426, dated June 12, 2018. Drill and sample one soil boring for proposed cell tower between Holiday Drive and Upstead Lane, Port Sulphur. Council Member Trufant Salvant. Number three, Crimson Gulf, LLC, application number 2018-531, Dated July 20th, 2018, install sandbags over existing six-inch pipeline, an area of exposure and or where the pipeline has insufficient cover, Grand Bay Field, Council Member Bartholomew. Hillcore Energy Company, application number 2018-547, dated July 30th, 2018, install pile clusters, drill the silage prospect number 31, install wellhead protector and six-inch flow line, West Delta Area Block 27 Field, Council Member Williams. Hillcore Energy Company, application number 2018 548, dated July 30, 2018. Install pile clusters, drill the silage prospect number 32. Install wellhead protector and six inch flow line, West Delta Area Block 27 Field, Council Member Williams. Number seven, six. Hillcore Energy Company, application number 2018 549. Dated July 30, 2018. Install pile clusters, drill the silage prospect number 33. Install wellhead protector and six inch flow line, West Delta area, block 27 field, Council Member Williams. Number seven, Hillcore Energy Company, application number 2018 550. Dated July 30, 2018. Install pile clusters, drill the silage prospect number 34. Install wellhead protector and six inch flow line, West Delta area block 27 field, Council Member Williams. And number eight, Hillcore Energy Company, application number 2018 551, dated July 30, 2018. Install pile clusters, drill the silage prospect number 35, install wellhead protector and six inch flow line, West Delta area block 27 field, Council Member Williams. I'll offer. Can you get a second? Second about. Oh. Is that the permitting for the on item three in Grand Grand Bay? Grand Bay, what that is? Grand Bay. Grand Bay. The covenant pipeline with sandbags, is that sufficient? Is that sufficient though? I'd like to pass over that defer that I'm sorry. Technical question having to do. I, I don't. Well, have we have to find out because I don't think no sandbag because that'll wash away if somebody hit that stuff. Could be gone. <laughs> Sorry, could well be. Uh, it, the application is complete. It's received all the departmental approvals. But if you'd like to defer it, yeah, I will. And I'd like to have the those people responsible come to this council meeting. Thank you. Okay. Well, we'll remove four eight three. So it'll just be one two. Four, five, six, yeah, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> All the rest of them. Huh? I'll offer. Can I get a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Bartholomew. Any questions or comments on those permits? Hearing none, the machine is open. In the middle of the bay? I'm just concerned about that because that, that. Permits passed, six yeas, an abstention from Council Member Black. And Mr. Burt was present, not voting. Let's go to bids and advertisements, please. A resolution authorizing the disposal of seven press boxes located at the Cypress Park Recreation Fields on F. Edward, F. Edward A. Bear Boulevard. Ms. Brenda? 
our intent um, that the cost of sending these to auctions would cost more than actually disposal of the units. I have Mr. Henry here if anyone has any questions as to why this is being presented. I just I just wanted to Oh, I'm sorry. I'll offer the re resolution. Can I get a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Juno. I, I, my only question would be, what are the plans to yeah, going so forward, Mr. Henry? <clears throat> At this time, you're just going to not have any and just until funds are available to, to replace them? Yes, ma'am. We just need them because the kids are vandalizing the press boxes. They are breaking the windows. They are doing drugs in them, uh, having sex and everything in there. And it's just been... We've been catching them, and it's you know it's, it's we need to get rid of them. They are old and they've been used since 2006, and they've been rotted out. So we're just trying to get rid of them, and we gonna come up with a plan after we remove them. Okay. The only question I had. Any one else have any questions? Mr. Russell. I had a question, but I guess I'm gonna ask it now, except for the fact that uh, the uh, surplus you're just gonna destroy them. Yes, sir. I was going to have solid waste north come with a cherry picker and just destroy them because he said they're full of bees and rotting and all the other things that go on in there. Y'all actually see that? <laughs> okay. That happens during the daytime? Uh, nighttime. During the games, we had parents call and say, call my phone, tell them they got kids in a press box and we go send the police over there. The police warned a couple of them. You know, but they, like I said, they damage them. They're breaking the windows. They're doing everything, in, in, and there's no use for them. We're not using them at all, so they're just taking up space. And, okay. Being used for things that they shouldn't be used for. Exactly. Mr. Lapine? Tony, that was my question. We're not, we're not actively using them at all, correct? We've used them since 2006, from my understanding. Okay. Now, when we destroy these press box. Don't we have some kind of electricity hook up to it because we used to keep uh, uh, the scoreboard lit up? Right. I already have the maintenance department remove all the electricity from the boxes. They're just ready to be moved, taken apart. Okay. So we just need to demolish? We need to demolish. I had uh, Mr. James. They took the air conditions out. They removed every, all the power lines and everything. So we just waiting to get them demolished. All right. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, the machine is open. <coughs> Resolution passes 8 to 0. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's revert back to um, the 4B, please. Um, if everyone's okay, let's take B, D, and E in Globo. 4B. Nicole Seafood, new commercial pavilion for crab business in an A-2 zoning district, 36241 Highway 23, Burris, Louisiana, Councilmember Williams. Charles D. Charles Andres RV Park, RV trailer in a floodplain zoning district, 2765 Hermitage Road, Lake Hermitage, Louisiana, Councilmember Trufont Salvan. E. Gregory and Cynthia Kuhn, New residents in a floodplain zoning district, 111 Deer Ridge Range Lane, Myrtle Grove, Louisiana. Councilmember Trufont Salvan. I'll offer. Ms. Salvan. It's not you. No, it is not me. <laughs> yes, it is not me. I don't have an H in my name. <laughs> I'll offer these uh, permits. Ms. Salvan, you want a second? Seconded by Ms. Salvan. Questions or comments from the table, from the audience? Hearing none, the machine is open. Legislation's passed eight to zero. Excuse Item five. Excuse me. Can I remind everybody to please key in when you want to speak so that the microphones can catch out? Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Uh, go with C. No, we deferred C. Okay. Just want to let him know. He knows. Okay. Five, please. Introdu introduction of ordinances and resolutions. Mr. Bartholomew? Yes. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, ordinance to amend the five year capital improvement plan, uh, repair Scarsdale pump station, and otherwise to provide respect thereto. 
Yes, sir. Mr. Black. A resolution authorizing powers President Amos Cormier the third or his designee to seek proposals, bids, or quotes to manage and operate the Platinum's Parish Recreation North concession stands and any other concession stands as needed throughout the parish, if warranted, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. An ordinance to amend the 2018 General Fund Manpower Structure and Operating Expenditure Budget, Recreation Facilities and Services and Parks and Monuments for Jackson Departments, the 2018 Road Maintenance Fund Manpower Structure and Operating Expenditure Budget, Road Maintenance Public Right-of-Way Maintenance Department, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. An ordinance to amend the 2018 General Fund Manpower Structure and Operating Expenditure Budget, Recreation Facilities and Services, and Public Awareness Departments, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. That's all. Thank you. In ordinance to amend the 2018 General Fund Operating Expenditure Budget Maintenance Department, District Attorney Building, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. In ordinance authorizing the acceptance of a donation for the Parish Council Department and to amend the General Fund 2018 Operating Revenue and Expenditure Budget, Parish Council General Department, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. In ordinance to amend the 2018 General Fund Operating Expenditure Budget, Community Action Agency Department, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. In ordinance to amend the five-year capital improvements plan by appropriating $38,138 to the feasibility study Baptiste Collette deepening project and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. In ordinance authorizing the acceptance of donations for the recreation department and to amend the general fund 2018 operating revenue and expenditure budgets recreation facilities and services department and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. In ordinance to amend the five-year capital improvements plan Plaquemines Parish Ferry Preventive Maintenance for year 2015 project and otherwise to provide with respect there too. Mr. Roussel? I guess I have an ordinance to amend. Am I on? No. <clears throat> have an ordinance to amend the 2018 general fund fund balance designations and otherwise to provide with respect there too. And an ordinance to amend the five-year capital improvements plan repairs for St. Leon drainage project and otherwise to provide with respect there too. Mr. Burke? I have none. Ms. Salvan? I have none. None, you think, ma'am? None. Okay. Next item. 6A1. 6A1. <laughs> In ordinance to annul, rescind, and set aside ordinance number 05-223, adopted August 11, 2005, and ordinance number 12-60, adopted May 22, 2012, which both provided for a no parking zone from the corner of Highway 23 down I and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Philippine. Off as read. Philippine off as read. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Juno. Mr. Philippine. Yes, off as read. Just want to remove read. the stop signs. Any question or comments from the table? Are you going to speak for this one? Okay. From the audience? Hearing none, the machine is open. Legislation passes 8 to 0. Let the record reflect that President Cormier has arrived. Are you ready to move to the status report or do you want us to revert back to it? I'd like to do uh, executive session first. We're going to, we, we've asked to do that at the end. We're going to go through the agenda because we don't have a whole lot of items and then we're going to go to executive session. Okay, thank you. So you want to wait on your status report? If, if I could have a moment, yes. Okay, just let me know when you're ready. Okay. Next item on the agenda, please. 6D. In ordinance to amend the 2018 General Fund Operating Expenditure Budget. Wait. Yes, sir. We're going to pass over until after, after executive session. On that one. Pass over. 6F. An ordinance approving the assignment of Bobco LLC as a signor to Point Alahash LLC as a signee covering three oil and gas mineral leases and one pipeline easement located in T17S R14E Point Alahash Field, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, to authorize the parish president to execute the assignments and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Bartholomew? Offer. Bartholomew offers. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Roussel. Mr. Bartholomew? Uh, Albie could say it's good to go. So he said there's nothing binding. He said it's perfectly done. And that's the only one who has a question or, or someone in legal may have an uh, explanation if anybody have any questions. Okay. 
questions or comments from the table? From the audience? <coughs> Hearing none, the machine is open. Legislation passes seven to with one abstention from Mr. Black. Next item. G, in ordinance to appropriate the sum of X blank to fund actions and services necessary to uphold ordinances and resolutions of the Plaquemines Parish Government duly adopted by the Council and to uphold the constitutional authority of the Plaquemines Parish Home Charter Rule and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Mr. Bartholomew? Yes, I can fill in then with the uh, administration. We'll fill in the blanks. I think it's 50000 and that's on line one, that blank, and line 28. From? From, some of 50000 from, uh, from the general fund budget. And you offer with those? That was the directions. Yes. Okay, is there a second for this legislation with those insertions? Mr. Bartholomew offers, is there a second? Is there a second? Legislation dies for lack of a second. Next item. H, an ordinance authorizing and directing the Plaquemines Parish President. Oh, let's defer that. I'm sorry, Mr. Edgecombe's not here. I, an ordinance to amend the five-year capital improvements plan by appropriating $79,300 to the drainage good news project and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Councilmember Roussel. Yes, uh, I offer and ask for a second. Councilmember Roussel offers. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Juno. Mr. Roussel? Yes. Um, this is actually the good news drainage project. And it's an increase in f federal funding from the HMGP uh, funding source in that amount of $79,300 to cover the cost of the project's increase. So it comes from federal funds and it doesn't have any impact on our operating general fund, undesignated, unreserved fund balance. Okay, is there any questions, questions or comments from the table, from the audience? Hearing none, the machine is open. This legislation passes eight to zero. Six J, in ordinance to approve the requested changes per ordinance number eighteen dash seventy one. Amending Rule 4, Merit Increases, Section 4.1 of the Plaquemines Parish Civil Service Commission Rules, adopted by Ordinance Number 96-133, and otherwise provide with respect thereto. I'll offer. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Roussel. What this is, is it's just going to, um, Rule 4 will read as follows. Effective January 1st, 2019, all employees in the classified parish service shall shall subject to the availability of funds and satisfactory work performance be eligible for a merit pay increase on each individual employee's pay raise eligibility date. Is there any questions or comments from the table? The audience? Yes. <coughs> Ms. Salvan? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Does this have any impact on port employees? It says civil classified parish so I would assume if, if they're under our civil service it would yeah, yeah that's my question I asked Miss Ellen to be here oh she, I asked her to be here and she she said she had interviews and she, I mean testing and she had a meeting from 1 to 1 30 so we can pass over if you want and if she comes over. Yeah, I, I would like to get some answers before I cast a vote on this okay well let's pass over it and after executive session We'll come back to it. 6L. 
an ordinance to amend the 2018 general fund manpower structure and operating expenditure budget interim employee training department and otherwise provide with respect thereto. I'll offer. Is there a second? I have a second. Mr. Russo seconds. What this is, is this is to fund an interim position. Ms. Ellen will be retiring as a civil service director at the end of the year. And this is to fund an interim position to come in and train with her until the retirement is finalized. It will be um, from the general fund appropriating $25,770. The position has been advertised. I, I thought this was going to come out of existing salaries, surpluses. I withdraw my second this time. Okay, Mr. Russo withdraws his second. I second Is the it? discussion on. Okay, Mr. Bartholomew seconds. I'll offer he seconds for discussion only. Yeah. Ms. Angie? Uh, my department did not prepare this. I'm assuming the Civil Service Department prepared it, and she has it coming out of on reserve undesignated. Oh, no, no, no okay. Right. And I, we, we have an understanding that we. Yes. We have a, an understanding that we were not going to touch the unreserved and designated right. fund balance because it's so low and that we were going to use existing funding that's surplus in budget line item salaries that uh, were not filled. And that's where this needs to come from. So if you could Can you verify quickly. That and we'll, well, we'll come back. we really don't need to verify anything from her. Or if you can. Get us a couple of line items where you can raise this type of money before the meeting's over. We'll yeah. go ahead and come okay. back to it. That's what I, that's what, yeah. Okay. We'll pass over. Six M. Six M. An ordinance to amend the 2018 general fund manpower structure and operating expenditure budget, swimming pools, day vent department, and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Mr. Bartholomew. I mean, okay. I offer with the changes that just passed out, please. Office with the changes that were passed out. And then I have to get a second for us to explain everything. You want to read the changes? Yeah, we can read. Yeah, because the public is not aware. Yeah, please. Okay, the changes under Section One, Line Nine, changing unfunding three four vacant lifeguard positions to read unfunding three vacant lifeguard positions. On line 10 for the position numbers, we're changing 655-2721-07 to be 655-2721-08. And then on lines 20, 21, and 22, we're changing the dollar values. On 20, line 20, under salary and wages regular, we're changing it from $9,300 to $6,975. On line 21, we're changing FICA taxes from $720 down to $540. And then on line 23, we're changing supplies chemicals from $10,020 to 7515 With those changes, Mr. Bartholomew, you offer? I do. There a second? Oh, uh, se seconded by Mr. Black. Any questions or comments from the... The purpose, the purpose of this is to continue the recreation department to provide chemicals to the pool because they're about to run out of funding uh, under the in the budget for our chemicals. So by taking this fund, this will carry us through the rest of this, this year to buy the chemicals to keep the pool up and everything else. That's what it's for. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Hearing none, the machine is open. The legislation passes eight to zero. Mr. President, are you ready to go to the status report? Or is that going to wait till after executive session? It's we can move if that's true if that's the choice. Now. You're on, go ahead. Status report by the parish president. Thank you, Chairwoman Williams, uh, for the record. This is the uh, President Cormier for the July 26th to August 9th, 2018 status report for Plaquemines Parish Government. To begin with, we have – 
My administration has been working diligently and as was um, as was suggested by Councilmember Roussel and uh, we, we are working hard and we are putting leaving a substant a paper trail uh, into the record of the EIS for the uh, mid barataria uh, diversion it's um, last night at the town hall meeting we laid out the facts that and I say mid barataria diversion with full intent because once again uh, there is a misleading statement by calling it a sediment diversion because uh, CPRA wants to break away from the term freshwater diversion but the facts once again contradict them it's 99.9% .9 water freshwater that will be diverted through the canal they propose to dig and less than 1% sediment our letters have struck a chord and we have received um, correspondence back from Chairwoman uh, Mary Newmeyer, who is on President Trump's cabinet. Uh, Ms. New Newmeyer is the uh, Chairwoman of the Council of Environmental Quality in Washington, D.C. And she, her uh, office oversees NEPA. Um, the and with this I would request I, I go into this matter to request that um, the council uh, reconsider um, agenda item number G which it's an ordinance to appro appropriate money uh, to uphold this council's ordinances and this council's resolutions. Uh, to give you an idea of what we're up against, CPRA pays their contractor, GEC, four million dollars, not one, not two, not three, but four million dollars to do their NEPA work. Um, I've spoken to a few council members and pardon me for not having time to speak to everyone, uh, we're requesting uh, a measly 50,000 uh, so that we can uphold this council's ordinance and laws and also do what's right for the parish. The reason being is that we believe that we found uh, an error in CPRA, the applicant's procedures, because in one of their environmental assessments, they stated that they would comply with all local laws and they clearly have not. They've not complied with this council's laws. So that's why we request uh, that this council would reconsider. Again, um, this is 50000 just to get someone who's familiar with this highly uh, regulated specialty field of NEPA. Uh, to defend this council's ordinances and also to defend the long-term good of this parish. It's always best in these situations, clearly CPRA by spending $4 million on this, um, it, it puts it into perspective as to um, the level of um, expertise. Now we're doing the best we can. Uh, we're expending a tremendous amount of time um, and that, that's uh, in the midst of a move and everything else. But we need help. If we're going to fight and stand up to CPRA, we've got to get some expert to come in and look at this. Um, sort of, I, I hesitate to use the term level the playing field because it's not going to level the playing field, but we're getting some traction. And... Um, you don't get a response from um, President Trump's uh, cabinet level member uh, without, you know, getting some traction. We're getting some eyesight on, on this, on our issue. So for that, simply request um, this small sum um, 
to, as I stated before, uh, help make our case in this record. From the, the more important to the uh, mundane, um, I found out last week uh, when a television reporter called me um, because Charles Ballet did not uh, inform me that he was pro having trouble in his building with the toilets. Um, be that as it may, lack of... Um, Lack of uh, notification, lack of correspondence, um, lack of communication. Uh, we have contacted, um, my administration did get Garrett's piping systems out there to inspect Charles Ballet's building. Uh, the plumber said that there was a uh, high amount of sanitation paper blocking up, clogging up one of the lines. Now these pipes are old. Uh, they're not as smooth on the inside, so when you get a lot of sanitation paper that's flushed down the toilet in, in Ballet's building, uh, it tends to clog the lines. That's, that's understandable. Uh, we've received some quotes, and um, I think we're going to be introducing an ordinance today uh, in the amount of um, the quote we got that to, to fix... Um, Charles Ballet's uh, toilets is going to be um, about $14,500. Uh, so we'll be introducing an ordinance there. We're going to go ahead and, and we're, we've already begun some of the preliminary work. Um, but um, that's the update on that. We, we still can't find out. We're going to find out who ordered the, um, the porta potty for the photo shoot uh, over there. Um, but um, I'll inform you of that, um, that unauthorized um, hire because maintenance has informed me that the district attorney's office, Mr. Bally's office, said that they did not call for the porta potty. So we're going to find out who did that, um, and, um, and we'll stay on top of that matter. Councilman Black has um, has the the pause uh, matter on the agenda, so we'll we'll deal with that matter there for the sake of time um, instead of addressing addressing it here. We had a meeting on Wednesday, August first, uh, with Councilwoman Trufant over uh, waterline. As as always, you know, providing water sewer throughout a lengthy parish like ours, um, the operation and maintenance costs are, are, are not cheap. And so we're looking, taking a long-term approach on this, and we're considering several options for addressing this matter long-term. Uh, and we'll continue working with uh, Council and Trufant on that matter, as well as with um, Infomark. On had a meeting on Thursday, August 2nd. There's more science that's coming out. Um, Mr. Savastano uh, brought that, that uh, recent scientific study to the office for our uh, review. Uh, Mr. Tesvidge also uh, brought in another study. Um, that was quite enlightening. Um, both of those having to do with um, CPRA's um, um, plan. On Friday, August 3rd, we met with uh, Ms. Dominique uh, Seibert. Uh, she works for the state, has uh, is, is been helping in um, agriculture and fisheries. We have also sent letters to NIMFS, National Marine Fisheries Service, uh, arguing that uh, the Magnuson-Stevens Act has not been in compliance with and um, 
we're going to continue to do so, and we're also enlisting help along the way and, and, and making our case um, and reaching out to everyone in our congressional delegation and elsewhere uh, to see to it that this matter deserves a second look, at the very least. On Monday, August 6th, had a meeting with, um, oh, I, I omitted one thing. On July 28th, I want to thank um, some parish volunteers and others who came over to the parish seat and did a great job of uh, cleaning our, our monuments at the parish seat. Uh, things really look nice over there, and next time you get a chance to pass by, you can look at the uh, uh, the World War One monument and look at the um, Korean uh, uh, conflict monument and some other monuments out front. It really looked nice. So I want to thank those volunteers um, for their um, civic uh, efforts and duties. On Monday, August 6th, I want to th thank Councilman uh, Bartholomew. We're, we're lucky. Uh, Councilman John Bartholomew is the first person that I know of uh, from Plaquemines to ever sit on a Louisiana um, a university board. And so we're lucky to have Councilman Bartholomew on the um, Southern University Board. And he was kind enough to arrange a meeting in Baton Rouge with uh, Chancellor John Pierre. Uh, he is the Chancellor of the uh, Southern Law School. And they have a, informed us of a Clean Water Act initiative. And so we've had um, subsequent telephone meetings trying to set up a time for some of their scientists to come down perform some water testing on the east bank of Plaquemines and, and the long-term hope would be uh, to have their Clean Water Act initiative get, become engaged and involved and once again um, trying to get some of the facts, bring some of the facts to light um, from both the scientific side and the legal side uh, so as to um, make sure that we're getting to the bottom to the truth about what's going on in Plaquemines and what's really scientifically best for uh, coastal restoration. On Tuesday, August 7th, uh, we had our pre-council meeting and I want to thank um, um, uh, uh, Councilman um, uh, Juno, uh, Councilman Roussel, Councilman Trufant, and uh, Councilman Bartholomew uh, participated by phone for a little while. Uh, so thanks for, for that uh, uh, collaboration. On Wednesday, yesterday, uh, we were proud to uh, host here in Plaquemines uh, another uh, well, cabinet member of uh, President Trump, United States uh, Secretary of Transportation, uh, Elaine Chow. Um, Ms. Chow has served in numerous, uh, this isn't her first, first cabinet level post, um, under a prior administration she was the Secretary of Labor. Uh, she's married to Senator Mitch McConnell and uh, has a lot of uh, influence throughout um, federal government. This was for the announcement of uh, uh, the state uh, being awarded um, a $45 million grant. And I want to thank uh, uh, the council members for attended, who attended, Councilwoman Trufant, Councilman Black, Councilman Lapine, Councilman Juno, Councilman Roussel, and if I admitted anyone, please forgive me. Um, we also had Congressman Ralph Abraham there. Uh, well, uh, let me go through the list of attendees. We had Senator Cassidy, our, um, both of our senators uh, in the United States Senate were present, Senator Cassidy, who wrote a letter of support for this grant. Senator uh, Kennedy Schott was there as well. Congressman Abra Abraham, Ralph Abraham, uh, who's, who's a, a medical doctor by trade and was very helpful. Um, it, it took a lot of his time and has actually wrote letters on our behalf, and that, that's also what's helping get attention. Congressman Abraham wrote letters um, on our behalf, Plaquemines' behalf, regarding this whole diversion. 
And that's catching. When you can get a member of the legislative body to write a letter, that, that catches a lot of eyes. And I think that's a big, um, our thanks go out to him because I think that's a reason why um, Chairwoman Newmeyer um, is getting back to us. Um, Congressman Abraham also wrote a letter in support of the $45 million grant. Uh, my administration um, and also State Representative Leopold uh, both wrote letters of support of this grant. So this was a, a team effort. Um, Secretary Child said that the total federal commitment to um, this infrastructure project would be $83.2 million. That still leaves us short at least 30 some odd million, if not more. Uh, that is the question at this time. Naturally, my administration uh, has proposed alternative financing measures. Uh, the state has proposed uh, tolls. We're not um, in favor of those tolls, but we will continue to propose alternative methods of financing uh, for this project. But it was a wonderful chance to highlight the parish, to have some personal face time with Secretary Chow, who is a very um, powerful person in our country, and to build up that personal relationship so that in the future, in uh, other infrastructure endeavors, uh, we will try to continue and foster that relationship because she's the one who ultimately approves grant monies. And you're talking about billions of dollars annually that come through um, the Secretary of Transportation. So it's a, it's a relationship we will continue to work on. Uh, I want to thank my staff uh, for helping organize it. And um, thanks for all the council members' participation in it. Speaking with um, Director um, Director Beschel, and I believe there are three tractors. Um, ditch, ditch, bank, ditch, ditch bank cutters. Ditch bank cutters that are out of uh, commission. And I know, I know money's tight. Uh, we're, we're, because money's tight, we're also, we have a preliminary agreement. We're trying to get the whole thing resolved completely uh, with the, uh, coming to an arrangement with the attorneys in the BP case. But that, um, we hopefully hope that that will be successful, but the, you know, historically, um, the parish has always had um, in the budget a fleet replacements fleet replacement fund, something to keep our equipment up to date. And um, the last two years, that was eliminated. So I know there's a uh, there's been some money shortages uh, due to the record high debt that we have to pay back and due to the decline in revenues. But um, we need to invest uh, in our, our future as well. And those three um, ditch bank cutters, uh, we will be back with you. Uh, we'll develop a plan and come back to you with it for those, uh, the replacement of that and also the um, ongoing operation and maintenance. Finally, the Plaquemines Parish Library at Port Sulphur construction is ongoing. It continues on Lake Hermitage Road. The project is nearing completion. There's, uh, I know there's some striping left to complete. On the good news drainage, uh, thank you. Councilman Russo, and thank you, Council, for voting to just pass agenda item. I can't remember the agenda item, but the monies in agenda number I, um, an additional 79000 for the good news drainage. Uh, that was uh, a FEMA-approved cost overrun, and we're targeted to break ground 
on good news drainage in September. Main Street, Jane, Main Street drainage uh, plans and cost estimate uh, will be submitted uh, by the end of August. Uh, we have requested phase two funding from FEMA, which will cover our construction. The environmental assessment in Main Street drainage is nearing completion. And the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has approved our permits on the Main Street drainage. And last but not least, Point Lahash, West Point Lahash Ferry. Um, we that's scheduled to be com uh, completed. It, it's work has begun, right? Yes. Work has begun. Uh, there was one on the upriver side. Uh, they they out of an abundance of caution. We all the engineers altered the plans just slightly, um, but we're still within budget. So. And, and, and on schedule. And with that, uh, Chair Woman, Woman Williams, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. Okay. Is there any questions or comments from anyone at the table for the President's address? <clears throat> Mr. Cormier, you alluded to item 6 um, G about the $50,000. Could you elaborate on the $50,000? Is that for litigation? Is that the high for another? It doesn't really, it's pretty vague in the ordinance that says, what are we appropriating $50,000 for? This would be for a neat, someone who knows NEPA, an expert in the NEPA process. Um, okay, attorney, say, engineer, okay. somewhere along those lines, because as I stated, CPRA, um, is paying GEC $4 million. This is high regulatory stuff. This, this is the type of work that our parish attorney you know, hasn't done this before, uh, or at least not in any great amount. And so we have a reason to believe that there is a way, as I stated earlier, to lay a good foundation to stop or hold up this process because of the state prior statement made in one of the environmental assessments that they would comply with local laws. And clearly, they have not. And I reference there what we've spoken about before, the fact that CPRA, and, and thank you, Councilman Lapine, for that question because you reminded me of something. To put things in context, we also found out, going back looking through the records, that this was not the first time that CPRA sought permits for bo salt borings. This happened back around 2012 and 2012-2013, 20, and we're trying to find the exact paperwork. But they dug, uh, I want to say if memory serves me, 50 some odd borings back in 2012 and 2013. That's why the council passed um, the ordinance in 2014, and you, Councilman Lapine, voted in favor of it. So those saw borings were sufficient back then for the design. These saw borings, and they're going, they're asking for, and I wish I would have brought the paperwork, but well over 80 saw borings. This, these are saw borings according to some of the engineers I'm, just, I'm speaking with. This is for construction. This has nothing to do with environmental uh, studies. They did the environmental borings back in 2012, 2013. So once again, it's just like calling something that dumps out 0.013% sediment by calling that a sediment diversion when it's dumping 99.9% .9 fresh water and changing the name from freshwater diversion, which was the name originally back in 2012. It was called the Mid-Barber Tower Freshwater Diversion. But evidently the marketing gurus up there who are getting millions of dollars for this whole marketing campaign changed the name because when you do an internet search, 
for freshwater diversion, you're going to pull up a lot of the negatives that go along with that. Uh, harmful algal bloom, uh, toxic algae, uh, dead zones, hypoxia. But if you do a search for sediment diversion, it's, it's a novel, novel thing because it's really a misleading statement. Less than 1% of this will be sediment. So the fact that they're using, they changed the name, begs the question, why did they change it? And why are they trying to mislead people calling it a sediment diversion? And th this, this also highlights another issue, the problem of there's, this has caused a lot of confusion. And that's why we've, had, we've called these town hall meetings, because one gentleman in our community actually came up and, and he said, he said, well, President Cormier, yeah, I'm in favor of this. Um, I live in Jesuit Bend, and the Bayou DuPont was a great success. I want to see the sediment diverted. And I, and I had to explain that, true, because it, it is a true statement. You can divert sediment through pipelines. And that's what the Bayou DuPont project did. That's what Lake Hermitage did. That's what uh, Spanish Pass Ridge did. So it's very, it's very misleading when you, you, you play with names, play with words, and abuse language. And because it is a fair statement to say that, like this fellow citizen said, you know, well, yeah, I, I want them to divert the sediment through pipelines. But that's not what this mid Barataria thing is. mid Barataria is a canal. It's a canal. And it's going to be 99.9% .9 fresh water. And as, as uh, P.J. Hahn used to always tell this council, and you remember, you were there, it's like the equivalent of opening up a fire hose, fire hydrant on your lawn, and expecting that to build land. And common sense tells you there's something wrong with that concept. I, I just want to be clear what this ordinance says, because it's very vague of who or what we're hiring. Okay, are we hiring an attorney to sue the state? Are we hiring a legal team? Hiring an engineer? Okay, you you still haven't answered my question. Who are we? Who? What are we appropriating the, the, money to do? Okay, the first the, the first thing is we've got to find a NEPA specialist, whether that's um, an okay. engineer or an attorney. Doesn't reflect that though. I think that's where he's going. This ordinance just says to allocate funding to uphold our constitute right. So our resolution. When you say NEPA specialist, is that an attorney? It could be an engineer. It could be an attorney. We just need someone who has done this regulatory type of work before to where, like I said, from and, and, and we've been, you know, I've, I've, I've abused some of my friends in the legal and engineering field. I've abused them, you know, begging for, for free advice, free help. I, I never did um, NEPA work before. Um, uh, our, our parish attorney, Barbie, never did NEPA work before. This is a highly specialized field. And so okay. we just want to get good information and, and not just the specialists in NEPA. That, that's what we're seeking right okay, now. That's not in the ordinance. The, the ordinance is very vague, as he stated. It doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't and that, that's what I'm, I'm, getting, I'm trying to get okay. clarification because my, this is my heart burn over it. And I'm going to tell you, I am not going to support anything that we put money in to do litigation to sue anyone in the state. This is premature in my opinion. Okay. I'm waiting for soil borings to come back, the EIS statement to come back, and then I may think about supporting your idea of a NEPA person or whoever. But in, in this ordinance, as it's written today, I will not support it and I will not. Died, so I'm, huh? if, if no one's going to bring I, it back I, I know, but I, I, but I, but he brought it up, so I'm asking him Sam. when he said in the ordinance, what is the 50,000? you begging us to go back to it to vote on it today. Councilman P Lapine, I'd be more than glad if, if, if you would support it, I'd be more than glad to uh, no, change the language the way you want. Okay, well, it's a null because the, the ordinance stops. Well, wait. He, he, Councilman Lapine asked the question. I want to answer it. it it's, a good, it's, it's, a, it's a valid question. If you want to narrow the language down to just say for the purposes of hiring, and, and this was Councilman Roussel's idea, to, to, to get more engaged in NEPA. So we can, we can narrow it, narrow it down and say if you don't want to, 
if you want to say that this money can't be used to pay attorneys, I'll find an engineer to do well, it. Well, that, that'll have to be, I mean, this ordinance died, so it's null and void, so maybe we can get something for the next meeting to introduce. But I'm asking for a motion reconsideration. Well, I don't. That's, I'm not, I'm very, shut it down. One more question. Mr. Um, Beshu, what would it cost us to get those ditch um, tractors running? They're $85,000 a piece. So three times or six times? No, you need three right now. Three. So they'll be on repair? $275. Repair, we've been preparing them and okay. actually... So 85 would be a whole new tractor? whole new tractor. Do we have people to operate them? Yes. Right now the... We have the ditch bank cutters repairing other equipment and weed eating and jumping on smaller machines. But we're not getting the big stuff done. Okay. Are we, are we able to get them running or are they just completely down? They broke down in my nothing? district, some of them. No, I, I mean, we... <laughs> they're jalopies, how's that? Okay. <laughs> we can All right. Beyond repair. Can we take parts off one and put on the other to get one running? Or? I mean, that's what we've, we've been doing, oh, no, but okay. we're down more than we're up. And we're getting a lot of calls from everywhere. Absolutely. I'm sure you are. Thank you. Ms. Albany, you in the queue? But uh, ditch diggers, uh, do we have any operable? We have one in the past. And we have, uh, I think, three or four. Three A booms, which is a lot slower cutting the grass. It's, you know, the, with the boom across. Um, and that's what we're trying to get the job done with, the A booms. But it's much slower. I think we should, this council should consider whatever we can do to accommodate Mr. Beshel because this is a big need, especially in, in, well, all through the parish, not just in the lower districts. Right. Mr. Nalami? Yes. We have sometimes three tractors cutting grass on East Bay. Now you talking from from Braithway, Carnarvon, up that way, all around both back and front levees, they can't keep up. They cannot keep up. And you know some of the funding, defunding of all these levee districts, primary duty is to fund those projects of levies and over the years we've been taking these funds and putting it in general fund operation so the thing is that since we're not doing it wisely we're going to have to put that money in posture to identify how much is received and how much is being spent for our levies if it all is being spent so it be it but we need to do that to protect ourselves again. This is one of the reasons why I keep on asking about the levy district to come to a hearing, to identify, put in posture, a line item, state specifically, that money is coming from the Grand Prairie Bureau Levy districts. Over the years, you had over 50% of private patch operating budget came from levy district. Not, and not supposed to be for that. But that's what we take that money to operate Plaquemine Parish. Right now, we have like 23 million or less, a little, right around 23 million Bureau Levy District, a little over a million on the Grand Plary. Oh, that's in general fund operation. But yet, we can't buy a tractor to cut grass and hire employees that is needed to run those, some of those tractors that we're so short on. That's all I have. Uh, Mr. Bethon, would you clarify those figures you said just now about the uh, Grand Prairie Levy District? And it's right over a million dollars that we have that we collected last year. From 2017? Last year, I'm just saying whatever was collected last year, that was I'm collected. I don't know this year. Yeah, the figures I saw were a lot less than that. But yeah, I'm, I'm talking about this year now. I ain't saying this year. <laughs> when we did the budget, in, I think in 17, I think, or, or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but in the past, we had way over that, way over that in years past. Well, yeah, well I mean, yeah. go back so. just about five years when we had yeah. $100 million, I mean, $100 <laughs> barrel oil, too. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we keep going through this conversation, and it's not doing us any good to just beat this horse to death until we sit down and look at the real figures. And my figures show a little different than what you're reflecting. Well, that's fine. Is it your, is it your intention to uh, say, for instance, 
the Grand Prairie Levy District, those funds are supposed to stay on the East Bank. The Buris Levy District and the West Bank Levy District are supposed to stay on the West Bank. In those districts, it's yeah. supposed to be applied applied to the levies. Whenever there's fund needed for those levies, that money needs to come out of those uh, of, of, of those areas from those districts to maintain the levies. Let me just caution you, you know, we've put in over $30 million on the East Bank, and if we go by that formula, you're going to owe us. On the well, way. if we go back by the formula and pass all the money we can collect, I think the parish owes us some money. Well, I'd be glad to have that debate with you when we get to Well, the it's study. not about debate. It's about the facts, the numbers. The facts and the numbers that we put over Well, we go 20 years back. We go find out how much money we spent, how much money we took that we didn't put back into the budget because we just got this levy done, and that's through a, a, a litigation, a summary of judgment by the court system. That's what adjudicate that, that system to be built. Planned Parenthood didn't do that. The courts did. Yeah. Rule to do that. I think the facts are getting well, a little fuzzy. Well, let's I'll just let's just call a levy yeah, well, no problem. prior to our next council meeting. Make a note of that, Kim, please. And we'll get an agenda together and we'll hold that prior to our next council meeting to discuss all of this. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Uh, what about the money for the track? Mr. Black? Yeah, Mr. Beschel. Um, yeah, I agree with you on the need for uh, this, these types of pieces of equipment. Um, I want to make a couple of comments, though, and some observations, and I have a couple of questions for you, too, Don. I'm not using the city of New Orleans as a model that I want to follow, but I will say that I travel down General de Gaulle daily uh, to get to my office downtown, and I see on a weekly basis actual weed eaters in the in the canals in the middle of General de Gaulle. And I mean, it's kept up. It's unbelievable how nice it is. Uh, I'm not sure what they spent on that or whatever else. The reason why I ask you that, I, I say that comment is you're talking about $285,000 in capital expenses for the purchase of equipment. Um, and I'm sure that you're going to have to have three people, maybe more, uh, to operate those pieces of machinery. Uh, and that's probably going to be about 150000 a year between salaries, benefits, insurance, wages, et cetera. That's a pretty big number. Um, have you guys looked at the possibility, and this is where I'm going back to the General de Gaulle and New Orleans mode of operation, uh, the possibility of privatization on certain aspects that you're responsible for, whether it be uh, the privatization of uh, operators on the levees, just to focus on the levees, um, or maybe even other different areas to loosen up. Because, as you know, with the privatization piece, you don't have to make these large capital expenses. And you also don't have to worry about maintenance, fuel, et cetera. It's all in the contract. Have you looked into that just out of curiosity? Not as a contracted position, no. Um, but I do know from just getting numbers from quotes from other people, that's very high. I'll give you an example. The cutting of all of our right-of-ways on 23 going down four times a year, they had five people that bid the project, and most of them were over $400,000. I think two of them was over five hundred. dollars um, And at the low bidder was very low, and the state might have to do something with the people because they, they only have two tractors and a couple of... So the, the difference between us doing it and someone else doing it, we're going to be cheaper every time, every time. And we know the area, and we know who needs what, and you guys can call us to do it. Um, I, I don't think it's a way to go, honestly. We could look into it, though. Okay. No, that's very fair, and I appreciate that response. Um, it's just something when, when this council has to appropriate, you know, that much money, I think it would be best for us to understand all the avenues and make sure that we are... Um, spending that money wisely. So thanks for that response, Don, and I appreciate it. Mr. Cormier? Yes, but uh, Councilman Black, with all due respect, it's it's not the council appropriating that much money. That's how much money that has always been spent um, historically. Um, it's, the, it's the cuts. that the, the, This is the new situation. The, the, this new depleted lowest manpower in the history, uh, well, going back at least documentable history in the power. So we're in a, this, this is the new uh, novel scenario here. Uh, historically, there was always that 
and it makes good common sense historically always that fund available for fleet replacement shell does the same thing you know you have money set aside to regularly replace vehicles to regularly really replace equipment and or leasing but that this is the due to as you stated due to the financial woes this is what we we got I recommend that mr. best will just get a get some quotes together and present it to the council for the for the replacement of the equipment we can go from there let me um I mean official quotes I mean go ahead mr. black yeah I just wanted to respond to that you know we talk about the lack of manpower limited amount of manpower as mr. Russo said you know, you keep referring back to um, prior years and prior administrations. That's when oil was $100 a barrel, and we had heavy amounts of production. Um, and it's not so much a budget based on the price per barrel, but it's the price. It's it's how much production. Um, and I can tell you, this is public information. But many major oil companies are reducing how they operate and what the cost is to operate. And it's becoming very, very fast that for them to uh, to make a profit, uh, those prices are going to be in the, in the high 30s a barrel. So they're not looking to make $100 a barrel anymore, or even 70 not even 60 When you're making money um, producing oil over $35, at $35 a barrel, which, which kind of scares me a little bit on, on the government side here because um, if people get comfortable with forty, fifty dollars a barrel, that's what we're going to have to live with for a long time. So what I've been saying here for the, for, for the last three and a half years is, and I told you this, you and I had a had a had a, had a meeting, uh, a personal meeting about it, is this is a great time for us to reorganize um, and 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 see how we can better utilize employees in different positions, because um, this is where we may be for a long time as far as uh, budget goes. Um, I know uh, American Petroleum Institute just came out with a, with a with a study uh, yesterday that I saw uh, projecting uh, a lot lower production uh, levels over the next few years, um, and that's where we make our money from uh, from the government. So I think we need to posture ourselves a little bit better and and look at that. But that's all I had just in response to what you. Had. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Mr. Russo. Yes, uh, Mr. Beschel, if you would meet with Mr. Burt and I between now and the next meeting, we'll solve your problem by the next meeting, okay? Thank you very much. <laughs> Ms. Dalvan, you have something? Yes, I just have a quick quote, uh, quick statement. In regards to all of the previous conversation about the, uh, the way we should go and, and what we should do, everybody realized that we are in a budget crunch and we're trying to make the best of uh, what we have, but... Whenever I hear privatized, it's, it's scary, scary to me. You know, I, I, I don't like privatizing anything. You know, first of all, it's going to eliminate workers. It's going to, you know, it's not going to be good for, for, for the employees. It's not going to be good for government. I don't like privatizing. I heard it before with previous administration, and it was, it was, it was scary. You know, if we if there wasn't folks that would have been standing up for the, the betterment of this government, right now we probably would have someone from counts from from Jefferson Parish or Orleans sitting at this desk. You know, privatization never works, especially in a small parish like like Plaquemines. So you know, I'm just hoping that Mr. Beschel and I mean Mr. Roussel and Mr. Mr. Burt can put their pennies together and, 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 and solve the problem as they suggested because I'm all for it and as I stated earlier, there's a dire need for those, those heavy pieces of, of equipment. So that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the table, from the audience? Yes. Oh. Yes, and, and, and Councilman Black, the, in the 80s, even going back to the 80s when all went down to um, I think around 10 or lower, that was a barrel. Uh, never in history has the parish had few, fewer, fewer employees uh, than now, uh, going back 50 years. So whether, I know, I know you're an advocate for privatization, but the bottom line is you need manpower to get, get uh, ditches cut, 
ditches dug, grass cut, uh, trash picked up, water services. It, it's, you know, either way you need manpower. And, and even if, and, and, you know, no matter which way this council goes with that, it takes money. Services don't happen without that. I, I just wanted to sh share that. Hi, thank you. Uh, my name is Cynthia Douay. I work for um, National Audubon Society. I, I'm the deputy director of the state office that covers Louisiana. Um, first of all, I wanted to congratulate your parish on the very um, recent announcement of Mr. Bill Bu Bubrig um, onto the CPRA board, the authority. I know that there have been some people working hard on that for a while, and um, it's my understanding that he has just been made uh, the governor just announced that he is going to be representing your parish. Um, I also understand he has a history in um, insurance, so will certainly be of great added value in appreciated, appreciating the um, NFIP rates, uh, the vastly soaring issues of insurability, and, um, and the ones that your parish continues to face as more and more land erodes around you. Um, Anyway, congratulations. It's going to be um, good to have representation for this parish there. Secondly, I was curious to know um, if the letters referenced uh, by President Cormier, the, particularly the ones to and from CEQ and the ones uh, back and forth with Noah and Mr. Abraham, will be available on your website. That was my question and I was hoping to know the answer to. Yes, they were all forwarded to um uh, Chairman Bradbury. Right. So, okay. Um, if if you can't get through, we'll we'll get. Okay. Thank you. Fascinating. I've been watching this um, with some interest, and fighting diversion seems to be a full time job. And um, either way, I'm I'm a diversion supporter, but don't live down in the parish. So respect very much uh, your issues that you you bring to bear. So thank you all for your time. Thank you. Mr. Ragus. Hi, uh, Kenneth Ragus, 1311 Holiday Place, New Orleans. I uh, totally support Amos, what he's doing, Mr. Cormier, I'm sorry, what he's doing with the uh, coastal restoration uh, and the fighting the diversions. He did make a reference today that I'm very aware of what this, when the saw borings were done back in 2012. And I, w I wondered about that, why they're doing that now. And I can tell you from my point of view, I've been involved in this for 28 years. And this, these uh, diversions are totally freshwater diversions. They will not create land. They will kill the salt marsh. And, you know, this, this please take this very seriously. And don't think that uh, if we don't support this, they're going to quit building our levees or something like that. Because the uh, the amount of uh, I'm sure y'all y'all know all the numbers on the seafood and everything, but uh, I totally support Mr. Cormier what he's doing. I've been helping him when I can, and uh, I'll continue to do that. And thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ragus. Mr. Ballet, I'm going to come back to you. Uh, let Mr. Valley talk, and then we're going to come back because Mr. Bird has, I mean, Mr. Black has something to say as well. Thank you, thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Chair, lady. Uh, and yeah, Charles Valley, your district attorney, of course. Uh, of course, when meetings, I mean, I knew I had something on the agenda, but I'd heard it was going to be deferred or deferred, so I wasn't. But then I got a text or two about certain issues. Uh, as you all know, where I live, where my office is, everything, uh, this phone's with me about 24-7. Uh, my home, I still have a home phone. Some people don't, of course, but I have a home number that's answered that's there all the time. So if anyone has any questions or anything, they can always call me. I encourage anyone to do that, uh, and especially in the area of my work with criminal cases for people to call me, you know, and I do get calls, of course, from the sheriff or the chief deputies, everybody like that all the time on issues because that's how we have to work. That's what we do. And so that brings me over to why I'm here dealing with my office, and I'm, I'm very proud of our office. I'm very proud of my staff. I have outstanding workers. Uh, and so I really want to make sure that the record is not filled with anything false, anything incorrect in the sense that the building that I'm in has had problems for years in many different situations. And the main thing right now, of course, is the restrooms, is the bathrooms. They stopped working last week, two weeks ago now, Thursday. And Thursday afternoon, Friday, it was called into the parish. 
when we do it, we have a system, of course, uh, could be anything. Toilets overflowing, could be a broken door, whatever happens. There's a maintenance department. That's who my people contact. Uh, I'm not going to call the parish president. They're not going to call the parish president. We're going to go through the right channels. They call the maintenance department, of course, to report, and that was done so, as I mentioned, about two Fridays ago now. When we hear of nothing or no word, is it going to be fixed or when are we going to get something, when there's a plumber, nothing. Finally, that Monday, just to set the record straight again, decided we have to have a working restroom here of some kind. We have about 30 people on average a day that come to the office, uh, police officers, defendants, defense counsel, you name them, come there. And we have to have something there work in some kind of way. So we call for porta potty. The question is a PO, when can it come and not come? I said, no, we need a porta potty now. We're open. We're not going to shut down this office. OSHA requires to have a working bathroom at any, any office situation. The parish requires in any building permits like this, you have to have a porta potty on site like this. You, you know, you cannot operate otherwise. So it's real simple. They deliver a porta potty. So we have a, something to use when necessary. And I do want to say, as you get older, you find that a restroom is something you kind of need to have handy. It's not like when you're younger where it might be something could wait a lot longer. I know that's not the case. That doesn't work anymore. So that's bought in. That's there. Next thing I know, somebody says there's something on Facebook or Twitter. I don't know what they, all those things are out there. There's something out there like this, and below, below, lo and behold, somebody takes a picture and puts something out there. And there it goes in the news media. So it's start calling and all that kind of stuff. And that's how it goes in today's world. We know that. We see that from Washington, D.C. on down. That's, that's basically every day of all this stuff. That's where it is. As far as the lines, they've been stopped up different times, many times. The primary restroom, the ladies' restroom, the one with two stalls that would really be most needed, has never been fixed and still won't be fixed. And that's been since day one or probably within the first month, I guess, we were in the building like this. And that's not going to be fixed, we understand. And we understand that. That's no problem. Give us a bathroom. We need something that works. That's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. It's not about any, anything else. Nobody doing anything. Uh, the lines, the plumber, I've talked with this Mr. Garrett guy uh, when he was out there the other day. The lines are small, old lines. They're rusty. They're old metal or some kind of lines like that. And the new toilets, the 1.2 flush versus the two-gallon flush and all those different issues, he explained all the things. That's all the problems that are occurring with it. And that's some of the things I guess that he's going to fix now when he's going to do something. Uh, they are to commence work, I think, tomorrow, work Saturday, off Sunday, and Monday, Tuesday is what I'm hearing right now. So, uh, yes, there's a porta potty. Hopefully it'll be gone. I wish it'd be gone already, but it's not. And hopefully it'll be gone by next Tuesday or Wednesday, I guess is what our hopes are, is to do it. And if anyone, as I mentioned at the outset, if anyone has any questions, please call me. I really don't know, don't know why folks can't go direct to a source when we have a small parish, a small number of people, everybody knows everybody, and it's easy to call to do anything on any issue like this. And that's the best way to do it to me, always. And the, the lady that spoke a moment ago, I, she, she mentioned, I just because I saw while I was sitting here, a little news thing, NOLA, whatever it is, that uh, I saw Bill Bubrick is appointed to CPRA, and I really suggest you guys that the resources I believe that he can get access to through LSU and all those different places is a lot. A lot of things like this is going to save a lot of money. I think you can get that for nothing to find out a lot of stuff. I don't think there's any construction, anything starting tomorrow anytime soon. It'd be probably years. So I think you could get a wealth of stuff to see where you are and then make the next step wherever you might need to go, wherever it should go. But that's usually my suggestion on things like this. I do that with police officers and everybody every day like so we could do it like this. Is whatever we can get from the state police lab, we go and get it there. We're not going to hire an outside lab. We go there because it's free. Might take another couple of weeks or whatever it might take, it does. But we get it because it's free. And it's good, it's good service. Just takes a while to get it sometimes. So I'd suggest the same thing that works. I know it works for us in our field all the time. So thank you. Any questions? Anybody, any questions? You have a question for Mr. Ballin? Well, let's just wait. Mr. Black is next in the queue. Let's just. That's it? Yes. Thank you, madam. Oh, you have a question for him? You have a question for him? No, I had a question for Mr. Cormier about. 30 minutes ago. Okay, well, let me let Mr. Russo. But I won't, it's not, I'm not asking a question. I just want to, I want to clarify something because it seems to be getting misconstrued every time I talk up here. I'm not an advocate for privatization. What I'm an advocate for is collecting data, doing analysis, a cost benefit analysis, and making sure that we're making the right moves with the money, the people's money, period. Not an advocate for privatization or anything else. I'm an advocate for actually collecting data analyzing it, and then making a good decision. 
I'm done, Mr. Russo. Mr. Cormier, right? Mr. Russo. Yes. So I'm an advocate for Russo. privatization. Mr. Yeah. Russo. Thank you, Madam Chairman, for giving me the mic. Mr. Ballet, uh, I appreciate your comments about using services and all for free. And uh, I would encourage you uh, to encourage your employees to pass up the Portal Let and go across the street to the assessor's office because a Portal Let, portal let is not a very desirable solution. And I would think that Miss the, the assessor's office uh, would definitely let you use her restroom. I appreciate that, and we have in the past. We've done that numerous times, but sometimes their hours are different than ours. Sometimes we work late, or sometimes we're there on Saturdays, uh, and so we've done that. And and so no, I totally understand that. And uh, and I, actually, I'm going to say that I think it might be used more now by people in the ferry line. They must be looking at it and saying, "There's a convenient place to go." So it might be something y'all think about in the future. That's why I'm. But, that's but, why I recommend it. Don't send your ladies in there. <laughs> but no, I, I do appreciate that. We, but I, honestly, I, of course, most of our folks they're gonna they're gonna go to court, wait till they go to court, or go to lunch, or go to PJs for coffee, whatever they're gonna do. We allow people to do it, but. That's the dilemma, of course, the situation that's occurred. And we do good people in there sometimes for an hour or two. We've had, you know, yeah, a number of times talking with interviewing people for two hours on matters and need to go to the restroom. And I don't want to tell them there's nothing available here. Right, I understand. That's it. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Henry? Oh, uh, Mr. President. Look, the people need you to keep fighting on the diversion deal, man. You got people that both to represent the people, and they're not fighting for the people. We need people to fight for the people. Everybody knows this is a bad deal for the people of Plaquemine. Benefit the rest of the region, but it kills Plaquemine. We need somebody to fight, man. We need somebody to fight that issue, and I hope these guys could come on board with you, man. Because if they're representing the people, let's get together. Let's stop fighting each other on issues like this. This is for the people, man. That's all I got to say about it. Thank you, Mr. Henry. At this time, at the request of Councilmember Black, we'll move to item 7-8. Eight. Update on pause repairs, Council Member Black. All right. Mr. Black. All right. Um, as we all know, on July 10th, just to do a quick little recap, uh, I called an emergency meeting in which the Director of Administration, uh, the Director of uh, Public Service, uh, the parish attorney, uh, council member Russo, myself, um, the head of maintenance, uh, Mr. Griffin, multiple members from the pause board, uh, were in attendance about some issues that were taking place, long-term issues that had been taking place for quite a while. Uh, subsequent to that, we had asked for a, well, during that meeting, we had asked for a, um, a cost estimate of what it's going to take to mitigate all these issues. Uh, subsequent to that, we had a, uh, an ordinance that passed to appropriate $150,000 for mitigation of those, those items. Um, I've received multiple uh, emails from PAWS staff asking what the status was. Uh, I've also sent a couple emails asking what the status is on the repairs. Um, the council has pretty much exhausted every legal option that we have right now. Uh, the council has exhausted pretty much everything that we can do as far as appropriations. I mean, we've done everything that we can do, uh, short of, you know, following a mandamus, but which is definitely not warranted, I, I don't believe, uh, right now. Um, so I'm going to ask again. Uh, I know some members from PAWS are here, some, some of the uh, folks who actually sent the emails uh, to the council. I'm not sure if they have received any responses. Does anybody want to come up and pause and, and, and address if you've heard anything from the administration or? No, we have not heard anything as of today. Okay. Um, so it's really in you guys' hands. Can we get an update on what's going on? 
That's so easy to give you an update. First, let me say this. Uh, since we had that initial meeting, we have been working on it. Uh, it's not like we've been sitting around doing nothing. We have been working, uh, trying to get the most for our money. I think the last council meeting I came here, and I had some quotes from some general contractors, and at the request of Mr. Roussel, he asked me to uh, call some independent contractors, which we have done. And so it's, it's not as simple as getting people to come here and drop everything today and come tomorrow. It's not that simple, as you know. We've had some contractors came to look at it. Uh, we received some quotes of $132,000 for the lighting system. Some people have walked through it and give some enormous prices. And we know that the budget was 150. So we have to eliminate the 132 for the lighting. So I told the guy what we need. Uh, so he went there with Mr. Griffin. And we do have some quotes. And some I just received today. But if you want to know, we have uh, a quote for the lighting, for the AC, and for the roof. And I gave Mr. Griffin instructions uh, just a few moments ago, a couple hours ago, to do whatever necessary to get those paperwork signed so we could work on, this pa on that pause building. But we have been working on it, and just because we don't respond as quickly to email don't mean we're not on it. Because, as you may know, there's other issues going on also. And I did respond. I think it was uh, the last email I got, or next to the last one, Mr. Griffin was on vacation. And I responded that he was coming back that Monday. When he came back that Monday, he didn't have everything in his care. So I told him, expedite it. He's been on the phone every day, calling contractors, trying to get it done. So I told him, whatever we have today, that's what we're going with. So here it is for you right here, brother. Uh, well, I appreciate that. It just seems, and you know, Director Giles, I mean, it just seems like every time it gets put on the agenda, mm -hmm. we miraculously get a quote um, that day. Well, let me let me do this. Let me let me do this miraculously. I will give you the number of the contractor of every contractor I've had, and he will give you every discussion that we've had, and then he can tell you when we were presented this. Because it's not like you're trying to question my truth. I'm not trying to question it. Well, that's what it sounds like. I have nothing to gain or lose you know in this what? matter. Director Giles, it is my job. And it's my job. Question. It's my job to respond. Administration. Well, listen, Mr. Because Black, we're not debating, but I'm when we talk, you. we talk as I, I individual men, not accusing. I'm not accusing you. You did. You just said it looked like miraculously every time we have a council meeting. And I could miraculously just my, show you the paperwork. It is my job. As an elected official, mm -hmm. to question how our money gets spent, of course, how our services are rented, of course, that is my job. But don't question my credibility. I'm not question your credibility. I'm that asking like. you that after 30 days, that's what it sounds like. When we initially had the conversation, after 30 days from when we initially had the conversation with the parish attorney, with the director of administration, with the members from Pause, a subsequent meeting with the president is that after 30 days, now all of a sudden we have just a quote. We don't have any action or activity going on at pause. They have broken lights. We've been knowing that for months. They not? have broken AC. We have that been going on for months. Um, they have water leaks from the roof. That's been going on for months. <clears throat> can, I, can I say something? Did I not bring in a general contract report two weeks ago? No. You sent me, this is what you, exactly what you sent me, a screenshot, a, of what a I camera received. screenshot of a computer screen. Of what I received. Of what you received the That's day correct. of the council meeting. That's correct. And none of my emails were ever answered. None of the emails from Black. the from the pause board Black. were ever answered. Mr. Black, let me, let me clear something up. I'm going to do this job to the best of my ability, whether you agree or disagree with it. And whether it comes on the day of the council meeting or the day after, it is what it is. That's it. All I'm and you have the right to accept it or reject I it. Don't but I'm not going to stay here and try to defend myself on the job I'm doing. Now, you can talk to the contractors. They can tell you when I received this. They can give you every day Mr. Griffin spoke to them. And if that's not satisfactory, there's, nothing, there's no more I can do about it. It's not satisfactory to me. Well, there's no more it's I can do about it. It's not satisfactory to the entire pause board. 
It's not satisfactory to the 30 or so volunteers. It's not satisfactory to the 200 cats, 600 dogs. It's not satisfactory to 23,000 residents in this parish it is. who rely on those services. And they're receiving it. And it keeps the quality of life the way it is in this parish. So it's not satisfactory to them. I represent one-ninth of them. Like my parish. And I also represent the entire represent parish. parish. That's so my job is to tell you, sir, that is not satisfactory. And my job is to demand, tell you, I'm doing and the demand. best I can do, and that's all I'm going to say about it. Whether it's well, mutual satisfaction do, or not. Then, right, maybe I can explain this to you. Can you modify, uh, um, give you an explanation? What's yeah, going go on? ahead. Okay. President Cormier asked me to go out to pause last week. I walked through the whole building, saw what needed to be done. I got on the telephone with industrial pumps, whom ordered one pump, I told him to order a second pump and wondered why it's taking so long to get these pumps. Well, first of all, you can't buy one of these pumps off of the shelf. This is the pumps that operate the AC system, okay? These pumps are three-stage pumps. They have to be manufactured as ordered. These pumps cost $2,100 a piece. They're not on the shelf, okay? This was done last week. Now, the gentleman told me Tuesday of next week one of these pumps are going to be there. We are definitely working on this project. It's nothing like she said we didn't respond. No, we did respond. I was there last week. I didn't see her there. Someone here was. Uh, no, I, oh, yeah, I spoke with you, Tammy. You and I got order. back and forth. Yeah, yeah I got you order. Back and forth. And then all of a sudden, but believe me, believe me, believe me. This project has been ongoing, working very hard on this project. There's no such thing as we're not doing anything about this project. Well, maybe that's Industrial pump. Wait, wait a minute. Industrial pumps is building these pumps. It takes about three weeks to build a pump, one pump. So okay. We got two coming. One pump right now is on its last leg. The reason these pumps are going out is because they've been neglected for 15 years or however long that building was there. Maintenance hasn't been done on these pumps. So what happened was water tanks went dry. Pumps burn up. They didn't get any water, they burn up. They run hot, they burn up. You lose seals. Okay, but this, this is being taken care of. Last week, I worked on it. Reverend Giles has been working on it, and uh, that's the best we can do. When right. you have a pump corporation that's building these pumps, it takes time. Okay, so my first comment is I'm glad you went out there last week. If you went out there last week, I don't think you did not go out there. I, I believe you went out there last week. Problem is, 30 days ago is when the problem was identified to get resolved. Um, so I wish you would have went out there 30 days ago. I wish I would have invited you to the meeting because I didn't realize that you have a new uh, job duty. Um, but I appreciate now, it. Now if, the job duty is this. I adopted a kitten from that place. And I'm very interested in taking care of the place. That's not my job duty, but it's my duty as a citizen to take care of well, the Mr. Frosch, I shelter. appreciate you stepping out of your, out of your box and, and doing that for us. Because we need somebody to step up and do it because we've had these issues at pause for months and months and months. And obviously over the last 30 days, nothing's been accomplished. I want to bring up some people from pause to, to discuss what's going on. Come to the microphone, ma'am, please. I know. May I have an opportunity to respond, Chairwoman? Yes, yes you may. Yes, thank you. And, and thank you all uh, for attending here today. Um, you know, the real problem here, Councilman Black, is that, as you stated, your jobs look out for taxpayer money. This building, the animal shelter, there was an expenditure of over $3.2 million of taxpayer money about five years ago or more. I think it was longer than that. Now. To get that price up that high on an animal shelter, there were installed in this building so-called environmentally friendly air condition systems. Now, not only did that jack the price up, okay, that to get to over $3.2 million, um, and, I, and I thank you for the $150,000, um, but the problem is, is that my maintenance department, because I've also spoken with someone in maintenance, he recommended completely doing away with this uh, newfangled system. 
that has, and that's the reason why the, we're having so many problems, is because these three-phase pumps pump the water down in the ground. It's some geo thing, and it's not like a regular air condition. Now, when I spoke to the maintenance man, he said for about $250,000 in this three, over $3.2 million building, which was $3.2 million back in 2009 or 2010 about, so you could appreciate the value, um, it's probably closer to three and a half million in actual value now. But if we did away with this whole environmentally friendly, what I call inoperable system, and go to a regular air conditioned system, we could eliminate this whole problem. Because as Mr. Director Frelish and as Director Giles stated, the problem here, the big problem here, is that we've got a newfangled AC system in this building that simply is not. Um, it's not a cookie cutter. We can't go to the store and just buy it. It has a different type of condenser, um, and the way it cools, I don't understand it, but I do know enough to know that if we had a regular air conditioning system over there, uh, we'd eliminate the prog problem of having to get specialty pumps uh, made. And, and also, you know, I, I have to say, it's the, the custody of the building um, because of these pumps, because of this new fi fangled environmentally um, fr so-called friendly system, then if there are problems, then I would simply ask Ms. Gagliano that um, you request that made a, well, I, my first recommendation is we need to change the system out because it, it, this this system is is um, it's not working. And when something does go wrong, you know, then it's, it's, it's much more difficult to try to get the parts in. They have to be specially made. If we had a regular system in this building, uh, like most other places, I think there's one other place in the parish, and this was all that FEMA construction that happened, that we've had so much trouble with. Um, but th that would be the best way to resolve this problem. Now, uh, Ms. Gagliano, is it how many portable AC units are over there? How many portable units? We only have one portable unit that um, cools on the animal control side. So all but the animal controls out of there. Yes. How many portable AC units are, were delivered over there to pause? We have one unit that is taking care of the paws, uh, the animal control side, because all of the air conditioning on the animal control side is out. Um, we have some small units, like house units, that are in the paw side, as well as on the animal control side. I have 70 dogs, close to 200 cats, and all of animal control is out, and most of paws is out. This has been going on for a month. Okay, so there are only... But, but how many units, portable AC units? One big one. One big one that, we, that was donated to us to use for the time being, and then probably 20. No, not 20. I mean, uh, like so fans. I mean, we have fans and, like, house little units that we could just plug out the wall, I mean, out the window, that kind of thing. Okay. Who, who, who in, I guess, like I said, maintenance recommended to me, and I, I'll just ask you, Ms. Gagliano, would you agree with maintenance, maintenance's recommendation that this so-called environmentally friendly system isn't working well and that we should just transfer over to a regular uh, standard type air conditioning system? We've had problems with the air conditioning for years. Um, and to me, it doesn't matter which way, as long as we have working air. And I'm sure the employees that are here today, they keep asking when it's going to be fixed. I'm sorry. They keep asking when it's going to be fixed. And I'm just looking for answers. No one's, no one talks to us. No one tells us. I'm, I'm just saying, can we get an update? And I get no response. I, I, I mean, I did get a response Friday from Reverend Giles that said Mr. Griffin was on vacation, but then that was it. I have no other response. We were told that the pump was ordered on the 17th. Since then, there's a temporary pump that one of our workers, um, is putting water in every two hours because the water, and see, and, and that's the, that's the issue is I, it's been, when I spoke to maintenance about it, is that under your normal standard AC, you use Freon. You don't use water for a cooling mechanism. 
and that's what's so different about this you know again i'm not an expert in the field don't claim to be but whenever you try something new and and who knows it, it, it i'm i don't know it, i'm sure it is probably environmentally friendly but we all want something that works you know for pause we want you guys to have an air condition that works and if this this environmentally friendly system isn't working for whatever reason then that that is the way I think we need to go. I understand that, but I think the main issue is it's taken 30 days and nothing's really been done. That's the big issue. No, no. Some many things have been done, Chairwoman Williams, and the problem is is that we have to get specially manufactured pumps. The parish government is not in the business of manufacturing three-phase pumps. Okay. I couldn't even tell you what a three-phase pump is, but a, a, a lack of response. They're they're not being told what's going on. It, it, but there's 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 work being done, and I apologize for if we didn't return the emails. But I know we've sent people out there. Um, I think that the, I, I think even the parish attorney went out there. I'm being told. So it, it certainly it's believe me. No one here wants to see you guys in the heat. Everyone wants this air conditioning problem fixed. It's just I think we're at a point to where, and and Ms. Gagliano said it. They've had problems with this system in the past. I think we need to just dump the system and convert to a regular standard air conditioning system to where we're not dependent upon water to cool. We, we've got a condenser and we're circulating free on like, like everyone's house unit. And that way if something breaks, we can simply go to a, a store and buy something, you know, off the shelf as opposed to having to wait for this specialty newfangled type system. Do you have a quote on a replacement system? The maintenance guy said about a quarter of a million. 250,000 to replace the whole and AC system. what is it system. costing to fix this? Oh, uh, Councilman Black gave about 150,000. No, what, what's the quote, Reverend Giles, to fix this system? Uh, what, uh, this is from year round heating and AC. What he's proposing is $13,430. That's to come in and do some initial work on the units and to monitor it monthly. And that's, uh, uh, let me put it what he says here. He said this will entail uh, blowing out the man drains with C2 monthly, checking the unit, making sure the unit is operational in the, and do periodic inspection on it monthly, and check the temperature splits and refrigerant levels and cleaning the unit, evaporator coil, and man drain pan annually. So he's willing to come in here for $13,000 get everything up to date where it needs to be, and then monitor it every month. That will free up Gary. That's the only AC man we have. And Gary went there yesterday morning. I, I told, spoke to James and Gary to make sure we go there to make sure there's water in the pan. So we're trying to make it work. Now, maybe it's not, maybe the communication line drops some kind of way. I apologize for that. But I don't want people to think we're not doing anything. So for 13000 how long is the monthly? Is there This is for one year. One year. Okay. One year. And by that time, hopefully... We have some kind of litigation or whatever. They are demo the building, upgrade it, whatever. I don't know. Mr. Black? All right. So a couple things I just want to point out. Number one, uh, it's my appreciation is that FEMA required the eco-friendly AC unit when it was installed eight years ago. It's nothing to do with the parish government or the former administration or whoever else. And get more than that to go find out and sue them. I don't know what to tell you. I'm just telling you that it had nothing to do with this council. It had nothing to do with anybody else. All I know is that it's an eco-friendly system that FEMA required. Whatever. That's the system that's in it. We've been knowing this about this AC unit issue for about six months or so. Matt, can I yeah. interject something for you? Uh, in order to save everybody a lot of problems, uh, in discussing the litigation on uh, the building itself, I directed the attorneys who were working with us on that issue. They had an expert who was going to come in and do an evaluation on the system to see if we sh what we should do with it, whether it's fixable, not fixable, as part of the litigation portion. So when, I can when that's going to take place. I told them to move on it today. Okay, so that's the point. We had we had this discussion, Peter, 30 days ago. Well, he was waiting on the reports. We're still waiting on a number of soil evaluations. But I did get approval from at least three of the experts who said you're not tearing it down, fix it. So, All right. so that was as of today. I mean, okay, and that's good. That's good to hear. Things. But still, 30 days ago, we already knew about the eco-friendly air conditioning issue. Uh, just today, just today, is when the president said we need to change systems. 
well, just I, today. I, I would just say, and he didn't know this. And then the director he wasn't in on this one, but that this just was a discussion I okay. had today, and that was when when I was told, well, maybe we should look at this. And I said, you think? So I told him, please get the man out here. And I'm I, working on it, and I, let's find out before we sink any more money right, into a I bad thing. I appreciate that, and I agree. So with I you. just thought I would and tell y'all while all this was. We, that's right. You and I talked about on on July 10th. Yep. The only other question is: is the president wants to change the complete system out for 250? Hey, I got it. Well, I would wait till this guy gets exactly. here. Exactly. I, didn't I even got know it. That that's why I thought. Well, I well would let me finish. What out. the director of public service just said that he has a quote for thirteen thousand dollars. To get the air conditioning up and running and maintain it for for, for twelve months, yeah. so that's why I'm throwing this. What's up the? There. I don't understand what the whole this. Why because they didn't hear this? I heard this too. I know that has nothing to do with you. Well, it does. I just heard about this evaluation. I want to go with Giles's recommendation. I think that would be short term a good answer, and it would get things right. Done. Like he just and like, and like he said, it gets us through the litigation. When the litigation's over, I'll have a. We can make a long term repair. Think we should go with the president's decision. Let me. Let me. Say this, so I could put this baby to rest and bury this. You asked me to look into it. I've looked into it. These are the prices. It may not have come as fast as we wanted, but we do have it. I asked Mr. Griffin to get everything signed. It will move forward, and I think that should be the end of the discussion. And I, it, but it's not. I am agreeing. Well, see what I'm saying? You still want to debate? But I don't want to debate, debate, sir. I'm agreeing with you. Okay. Listen, I'm agreeing with you. I'm saying that we should take your recommendation on the quotes that you that you received from the AC guy, and just as you said, repair it, sign a contract for the year. By the time it's over with, the litigation will be done, and we'll know which direction to take. But the parish president's recommendation is to spend two hundred fifty thousand dollars on a whole new system. Because that's, it's not a debate, it's and that's just, because we've received word back from, in this time period. We've also received word back from one engineering expert, and I heard this from the parish attorney, that the building can be salvaged. So uh, you heard Ms. Gagliano state that they've had problems for years with this system. When you're shooting water down into the ground and using a newfangled cooling system, instead of just using Freon, wh why, why do we, if it, if it hasn't been working for a long, if it's been giving us trouble for a while, and we know, again, I'm relying upon the expert, we know the building can be salvaged which we didn't know going back uh, a couple meetings ago, then why, why, but so you like I said. With, you disagree with the director's I, I, I don't, my approach is to solve this from a long-term standpoint. And if Ms. Scagliano says they've had problems for years with this thing, then again, and it could be that this environmentally friendly system um, you, you, I've seen personally seen the cracks in the building. So if you're shooting water into the ground to cool it, and you've got cracks in the building. Now, again, I'm not an engineer. I, I don't claim to be an expert. But we know that if we had a regular system, a standard system, that's another solution. I'm just proposing it out there. I can't, I can't appropriate the money to do it. So, but I'm just offering another solution that would be a long-term fix. But I think in, in the immediate terms we need to go with Reverend Giles's recommendation so we can get the AC up and running and monitored. I have a question. Yes ma'am. It was stated that the pumps were ordered. I'd like to know were they ordered on the 17th? That's what I want to know. You said they were ordered this week, right Mr. Fellish? So one was ordered, oh, one is supposed to be here Tuesday, correct? It was supposed to be here two weeks ago. Right. Okay, I spoke to the gentleman two days. And he told me, yes, last week the pump was supposed to be there. The day I talked to him last week, the next day it was supposed to be there. Well, evidently it didn't show up. So I called him today and I asked him, what about the pumps? Well, the pump's going to be here Tuesday now. Mm -hmm. um, the first pump was ordered, yes. Around the 17th. Whenever y'all reported, it the whenever y'all reported that the pump was down and the units went down, that pump was ordered because the the uh, maintenance guy went in and saw it. One pump, the seal was leaking on it. One pump was totaled out, and the other pump's on its last leg. So uh, right now, one pump is running. That one pump, the seal is leaking. It was repaired one time, just to show you how obsolete these pumps are. 
They just replaced the seal about two weeks ago. Well, the pump is running, but the seal's leaking again. So that tells you the housing on that pump is pretty much worn out. All right, so I decided the one pump wasn't going to be enough, so I ordered another one. Okay. These pumps are $2,100 a piece. It takes time. These are three-stage pumps. You can't go to uh, a hardware store There's and buy this pump, okay? Now, the system, the way this system works, I'm explaining to you something right now about this green system. First of all, oh, we're not going to use Freon to run this system. Well, guess what? They had to use Freon. They have chillers that actually are Freon cooled to cool the water, send the water back to the coils in the building, use that for cooling. It has to come back. Somehow it goes in the ground. I never looked at the system, but the way I understand, some of it goes in the ground also. Well, okay. They said, well, we're going to do an environmental friendly uh, system. Well, guess what? They're still using Freon. Okay. They're using Freon to cool the water. The one pump? So they didn't it's save anything. It's being on they, Tuesday and another one has been ordered. Two pumps, two new pumps are coming. Right. And uh, I'm planning on ordering the third one. Okay. Okay. All right. Mr. Black? I don't have any. Mr. Ru Mr. Bartholomew, you, you was in the queue? No? Okay, Mr. Roussel? <laughs> Yes. Wait. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, look, uh, let me just get some. <clears throat> I'm in. Mm -hmm. Just to, uh, to get some clarity to the solving of this issue, uh, I heard that we want to go with uh, Reverend Giles's recommendation. From what I heard that you read was simply a thirteen thousand dollar maintenance recommendation. Correct. Yes. The repair, actually, the repair is. A separate item. How much is that repair going to cost? Well, the uh, the repair the repair is thirty nine fifty, and the uh, maintenance part aspect of it to make sure the filters are changed and to come every month is ninety four hundred dollars. That's where we get the total of thirteen thousand. Right, so they're going to put the new pumps in. Well, the way you get on here, full maintenance service one. 14 heat pumps and three loop pumps. And he told Mr. Griffin he would put everything in. All right. I just want to make sure that we don't come back here next week and have the same discussion. Yes, sir. I don't want, I don't want to talk about so, a dog or a cat no more after the day. So the, so the 13000 will take and put the pumps that he ordered in and maintain it for a year. Yes. Okay. And if there's anything different, I'll let you know. I'll email you. I'll text you. I'll call you. Whatever I have to do to make sure everybody's on board with it. Now, that, that takes care of the AC unit? Mm -hmm. The electrical? Yes. We have a separate issue with that? I have. The guy gave it to me today. That's uh, $20,750. That's for all. Uh, they replaced 30 light fixtures, which is lamps and reflectors, wire and hangers, and they also have the labor in there. And everything come out to $20,750. And that will change all the light fixtures? 30 light fixtures. 30 light fixtures. 30 lights. And they'll come on automatically, or they'll still be the switch? I think it'll be the switch. Uh, I think it's a switch. I don't think it's automatic. I'll, I'll have to talk to Mr. Griffin about that. All right. So that takes care of the EC and the electrical from yes, what you got. And the cosmetics and the rest of that money can be spent on other items in the yeah. building. Yeah, because I do have the roof also, and the roof was like $4,800, $4, I think, for the roof. So that'll take care of the roof, the lighting, and the AC. Okay, so you got plenty enough money oh, yeah. to get this fixed? Of course. Okay, so I don't know if that satisfies anybody for the time being, but it's my understanding now that we have a handle on this situation. Mm -hmm. We have the money in place. Yes. We have the pumps on ordered. We have the contractor lined up, and yes. we're going to get this done. That's correct. Under 40000 Okay. So you can take the rest of that money and give back to me what y'all took last time. No, uh, we're not going to take any money back. No, because you may need additional funds. That's right. We're going to have another problem down the line that we won't have any money yet. We're going to buy additional of these uh, specialty manufactured pumps to have, let's buy a couple uh, extra pumps next time it breaks to where we, we, we'll have them manufactured already. All right. So I, I just want to leave everybody with that scenario so we know where we're at. Yes. Ma'am. State your name. My name is Michelle Falgo. I live in Councilman Black's district. And my question about this is, can you give us time frames? It's 83, 84, 85 degrees in there every day, all day. And we talk about pumps and times coming in. If the pumps come in on Tuesday, how long does it take to fix it? 
When is somebody going to come out and fix it if it comes in on Tuesday? Reverend Giles, did they give you a time frame? I'm sure they're going to come out immediately. I, I didn't discuss all that with them today. I'm trying to get everything in place for this meeting today. But I can call him tomorrow and find out. But I can't speak for the contractor because I don't know what other jobs he may have. But I will uh, stress the importance of this and get him as soon as possible. And, and that's another good point, uh, Ms. Falgu, is that <laughs> when you have a, a standard system, you have more people that are available to come out and service it as opposed to putting in a specialty three-phase pump. It just for, for the sake of the discussion. Right. Thank you. My question is, if the pumps do not, if the pump doesn't come in on Tuesday, do I call you, Ms. Please call me. Okay. And are you going to let me know? Are you going to call Paul to let, me, let us know when they're going to come in to install it? I will. I mean, I have 200 cats, 60 dogs, and we're putting frozen water bottles with them every day to keep them cool. That's, that's why when I spoke to Mr. Griffin, I asked him, did we have the uh, portable units over there? He, he told me there was 10 portable units, and I thought that was sufficient, but now I know different, so I'll make sure we get on it immediately. I'll give you my word on that. I'd like them there Tuesday. If it comes in. If it comes in. It better come in. Okay. Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> Mr. Lapine, you have something on this? <laughs> Mr. Bartholomew forgot what he wanted to say. I didn't forget what I wanted to say. Oh, you want? I know what I wanted to say. <laughs> I didn't forget anything. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't forget. Okay. Mr. Lapine? Uh, I guess the, the question, too, uh, Department of Agriculture strain sent down some air condition, some port work. Do we still have those on the premises? You, okay, wait, can you come to the mic? I just, I want some clarification. Because I think what was sent down was two, and then is there, only, is there one working, or is there one on the premises that works? We have one big unit outside that was uh, uh, from Tangipahoa. I know, but and that's the one that's hopefully that's trying to cool off our animal control. So we are actively using that one now. Yes, we have to because okay. all, all everything on that side of the building is out. All the cats and all the dog rooms are out. Okay. And, and for the record, I don't know if it's mine, but I brought one of the portable units over yes. there too. We're, We're using, using that yours. one too. <laughs> so, Mr. Bartholomew. <clears throat> Everyone knows how important it is for life. Whether it's a human life, animal life, life in itself in general is very important. And I don't think anybody in this council, this administration is circumventing that or trying to put any, any type of negative connotation on not providing services that is needed for PARs. Because after all, you have a lot of committed people that volunteer in their time for that effort. And I also applaud, uh, support animals. I used to have animals. Still do. And I take care of them. Sometimes I take care of them better than I take care of myself. But the point is I think we need to we need to develop a relationship as the district attorney said, go to the source. Not any other source, but go to the source who is responsible for what things need to be done. And I assure you if you if that takes place then this time we spent today would never came to pass because we know we go directly to that source. So my suggestion is please consider going to the source and not create a different agenda of going somewhere else other than the source itself that is responsible for it. Now, the key is to this. If you don't hear it the first time, what happens? Do it again. And if you don't hear it the second time, you do it again. You see what I'm saying? You have to be persistent and consistent in what you believe and what you do. And there's several, there's a man I think says that he believed in one thing and he did that. And a lot of people didn't agree with it. A lot of people didn't agree with it. But he believed in the faith and he kept it. He also gave his life for that. So this is the preference of what you are. A committed group of people that's concerned about pause. And you should be consistent with that. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Bartholomew. 
let's revert back to item 6L, please, on the agenda. Now I would like to offer with some changes. An ordinance to amend the 2018 general fund manpower structure and operating bu expenditure budget, interim employee training department, and otherwise provide with respect thereto. I'd like to offer with the following changes on line 24. We're going to scratch the unreserved, undesignated fund balance as follows, and we're going to insert 003-780-467, Five one zero dot zero zero five. That's going to be prom salaries and wages. And with those changes, I offer Second. seconded by Mr. Roussel. Any questions or comments on this item? Hearing none. Machine is open. Yeah. Legislation passes eight to zero. I'd also like to revert back to item 6J. I have an answer to Ms. Salvant's question on that one. Okay. In ordinance to approve the requested changes per ordinance number 18-71, amending Rule 4, Merit Increases, Section 4.1 of the Plaquemines Parish Civil Service Commission, rules adopted by ordinance number 96-133 and otherwise provide with respect thereto. I'll offer. Get a second. Seconded by Mr. Roussel. Uh, this does include all civil service employees um, classified, both port and, and parish. So it's, my, oh, it's my understanding that they are they're under the same civil service ruling. Well, well then my question becomes, um, was there any, or maybe Mr. Matthew can answer that. At some point did... Uh, did they make a, it was some conversation taking place where they were attempting to become a separate system? Is that still in effect? I think he went before the Civil Service Commission, Mr. Matthews. I just addressed the question that you had earlier to Ms. Ellen. I mean, maybe he can elaborate on that. Yeah, I would like to elaborate. Include port employees. Okay. The, the only thing I can elaborate on is we had a, uh, on the agenda, the civil service, I can't remember what month it was, in which we asked the question if there can be a separate play plan within Plaquemines Civil Service. And it was brought to our attention uh, that that would be a question to answer for the board. And so that's all public record. I think that's, yeah. I think that's where my, my confusion came in because there was some gray area there. And I, was, I was unclear, but separating, and I was making sure that this was, it would, if this plan encompassed them, then at a later date, they would come back on a different plan. And I just want, my whole objective is being uh, equitable with board, with board, board parties, if, if that's the case. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Roussel? Yes, uh, I attended that civil service board meeting, and the attorney at the board meeting said that he had checked with the state and that the issue of a separate pay plan within the same civil service system wasn't really allowable. So I think that should be an issue that's moot, and we can forget about it. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on this item? Yes. Ms. Henry. Can you tell the public how much the merit increases would be? Well, it, it's not. It's based on it. Merit is based on. Let, let them know it. Let me just address that. Mr. Roussel, he was he uh, was in attendance. Yes, a merit increase is 3% of the total payroll, so it's a variation if that's what we decide to increase a merit pay raise with during the 1918 budget hearing for 2019. I said 1818. I meant 2018, if that's what I said. So it depends on the payroll. And I understand and all that's that. what we usually budget. I just wanted the people to know about it. I understand exactly. Oh, okay. But, the you know, there, you all want to really there. explain it to the people, you know. <laughs> hey, this is just changing. Explain it to the people, man. Right. This, is, just allow this isn't designating any percentage. This is just allowing, this is changing the rule. That's all it is. No. The legislation is not even addressing the percentage of the increase. It is just saying that it's going to revert to their retirement, I mean their um, eligibility date. Yeah, let me, to, to clear it up, we went to Civil Service Board and asked them to change the Civil Service Rule for employees to be able to receive their, their 
merit increase in the first pay period in January versus their annual anniversary date. Right. And the Civil Service Board agreed to it, so they passed it and they came back to us and now we're approving what we've asked them for to begin with. So this will allow merit increases that are budgeted to become effective, the first payroll in January, so they don't have to wait the entire year because non-classified employees get their pay merit increase in January and everybody else has to wait. Now they're all on the same page with any budgeted merit increase come and do first payroll. Good deal, Ben. Thank you. Mr. Bartholomew? Yes, and I think the amount of money that they receive has already been identified in the ordinance of, that we passed years ago, to how much the, it would, based on the evaluation determined times, to place the person to get that percentage of their salary. But that hasn't changed. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, the machine is open. Legislation passes eight to zero. At this time, I guess we can move into executive session. You want to do discussion first? Yes. Okay. Let, let's let's go to set, uh, item seven B. Will be deferred. No, they got somebody out here to talk. To. Yeah, that's what we're going to go to. We're going to go to the discussions. New business. Ms. Barbara. District 1 update, Councilmember Bartholomew. You're on. Thank you. I have uh, several uh, concerns for some residents on lawsuits, uh, plight my parents, owe them some money. Uh, so I need to find out, uh, just tell me, ask, what is the plan of... Uh, taking care of those judgments. Anybody have any idea? So I can go back and tell them. Are you speaking in particular of the Mole case? I the Mole case. There's other, there are three other cases from residents on the East Bank. Judgment. Well, I'm just saying, but still bringing it up. They, they want to know. It's already been adjudicated. It already been determined how much money is being paid. I'm talking about, about uh, during, after the storm. Katrina, the sheriff department, the buildings we had owned. If you were asking that in a general sense and you want my opinion, I'll be glad to offer it. No, offer it. Go ahead. Everybody can offer their opinion. That That's all it is, an opinion. Well, That's all I can tell them. <laughs> you want to hear it or what? It doesn't matter. Yeah, let them accept your opinion. My opinion is that when there are funds available, which there are no funds available at this time to pay judgments, that we allocate X amount of dollars to a judgment fund and that we authorize the attorneys to go out and negotiate across the board with those who have judgments for X amount of percentage on a dollar, take it or leave it, and in the sequence that they were issued. So there will be no discrepancy and there will be no more litigation about discriminating against paying on lawsuits. So the oldest judgment, coming right on down to the newest judgment, based on the amount of money that we have available and budgeted for judgments and put it in the lap of the attorneys in the legal department to try to make a settlement. And I think that's the way it's done in New Orleans and around, a, around the area. And it's a, probably a good model. And if we get to have 50 cents on a dollar, then it's 50 cents on a dollar. If it's 80 cents on a dollar, it's 80 cents on a dollar. But, and you, you probably settled judgments like this before. Maybe you might want to chime in on that. But that's my opinion, and you can take it or leave it, like you said. Yeah. The only question is that we have settled cases ex post after other places have been adjudicated. Just counsel appropriated funding to settle cases. Go ahead. I was just going to say we just need to have a consistent approach that uh, basically uh, doesn't doesn't handpick them. As long as we have a rational way in which we go about it, that's perfectly fine. The suggestion by uh, uh, Councilman Ursell is absolutely a good one to follow. So I think that would be very helpful when we have the money. So just tell me when and we'll start right Should we, the question is, I guess, do we notify people, just tell, tell their attorneys and just tell them point blank, we can't do anything until is there any way that, because we get, we get you know, calls. I'm just I, saying, I don't know I, how I to deal with that. All the time. Because I, my response is, we don't have the money to pay it at this point, so 
I think that's why they're calling you because I always my standard response is I don't have control over the money. We don't have the money in the budget. I have no authority to do anything other than. Uh, if but I think it's just to be reiterated, yeah. maybe if see that's that's way. my concern because then it shifts from you to me. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Because we are we are the appropriating agency, and what you understand, you have no objection to paying as long as you, if you get the money from the council. So we on the hook. Well, from the my, public standpoint, my, my, to award them the funding that the court had granted them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I would suggest then that I, I think Councilman Roussel's suggestion would be a good one. I'd be happy to sit down and actually propose an actual way in which we go about paying it, and maybe that would solve the problem. And I think we may yes, maybe send yes. a letter to all the exactly. potential. That's what we would do. Yes, yes. I appreciate this that. This is going to be the process going forward. Right. That's correct. Appreciate that's that right. very much, uh, Mr. Addition to to make sure that it's done fairly, that is some type of legislation is passed because you just can't, you know, just allow and just assume that it's going to be done fairly. No, ma'am. What I what I would do is all can attest to the fact, Mister Mister. Uh, I gotta slip your name. Your name slips me this morning. Uh, uh, the, the problem is is that we can't rely on someone's judgment to make a fair call. Yes, ma'am. Okay. No, there, there would we be could, set we, criteria. We, like probably, we, I think the suggestion was a good one that we would start at the oldest and work our way forward. Yeah, but but we haven't been doing that. I understand well, that. I that's what I'm saying. We I think that's so what you need legislation to, to address that. Yes, ma'am. And I, I would bring that to you as legislation and look for an ordinance so that I would have authority to enter into those. Okay. But I, I will come up with a plan and bring it back to you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bobby. Anytime. The other issue, uh, the courthouse, uh, now we're on the stage of putting the frame for the glasses up front, on the front of the building. Well, it's not the front as you would look at it. The front is on the side of the building facing the grocery store. That's, that's the front. Uh, but anyway, they're putting the glasses, the frame, the structures to put the glass in, and the glasses are on site. The, uh, the roof, they are working on the roof at the same time. So that should be done pretty quickly. Uh, the other issue also, we requesting a change order for a generator because we need to have that being a two-story building. And because of the mere fact we have elevators and those things in that building. So that's going to be coming. And the, uh, the, the, uh, this cosmetic thing, we've got to deal with that one once they finish. Also, there's a change order coming possibly for the street along the uh, perimeter of the uh, projected courthouse, the county seat. And also we need to get back with the engineer concerning the, the makeup of the computer, uh, the council chambers. We have to get back with that because they haven't been responding to our uh, secretary who's been trying to get them to accomplish those needed, uh, those needed criteria that were suggested by council members. So we worked on him to get back to her. So what I would have, uh, Mr. President, for you to give them a call and that we need to come to some kind of closure because it's been over months, that several months that just been in discussion. And we haven't, she haven't received anything yet. And she's been periodically back and forth, back and forth, trying to get this information done. So make sure we're in order as request, uh, the thing that's requested by this governmental entity, this council. We want to make sure it's done. Because I don't want nobody to leave this council saying, John, but I didn't do anything that what we suggested to do. You see? I want to make sure all that's done as requested. So I want to make sure we get that done. Uh, Highway 15 falling apart on the low end. Uh, the money we did have for it, we just, uh, transferred it to the up the road to Phoenix area, which was done. But the low end is steady crumbling. And the constant periodic getting holes and stuff of that nature. So those are going to be very important issues. And the reason why I'm saying that, because sooner or later going to be hazard to travel that road, but with the holes that's involved in that. And too often we get let things go and not try to not try to fix it. The money was there at first. It was there without a doubt. The money was there to do that. It's not like it was never there. It was there. Okay. Uh, other than that, uh, I told you about the tractors. We have three of them. 
Sometimes we have two. But three tractors cannot cut the entire East Bank levees. It just can't keep up. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for the time. Evan D. District 2 update, Council Member Black. Yeah, real quick, um, if you notice outside, we have um, all the armed services uh, represented uh, with a um, with a memorial plaque. Uh, I installed those about two weeks ago. Uh, it was a donation from uh, one of the uh, businesses in my district, uh, the owner um, of Pockets Billiards, uh, Mr. Tony Pham. Uh, unfortunately, he decided to uh, close his, his business down for no other reason but to actually re-enlist uh, in the Army. So kudos to him, um, and I appreciate that he called me. Uh, he said that he thinks that this would be a, the best place to, uh, to show those uh, pendants would be in our council chamber. So we had them installed about two weeks ago. So that's where they came from. I just wanted to give him uh, some kudos and wish him, uh, Mr. Tony Pham, well. Uh, I'm sure he'll be headed overseas uh, pretty soon. So that's all I have. 7 eight, please. Could you read seven? Discussion by Mike Vestudo. Together, please. Sorry? E and F together, for Mr. Vestudo. E is discussion by Mike Vestudo regarding Highway 23 access, and F is uh, Mr. Vestudo to address the council regarding ethical and professional courtesies, and that's for Council Member Roussel. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Vestudo um, has contacted me and would like to make some comments. We've discussed the uh, crossing, and uh, turn the floor over to you, Mr. Mike. Again, my name is Mike Vestudo. I live at 291 Bergeron Drive. We've got about 20 families, and there's one house under construction, a couple more going to be under construction, and we need help with a cut through going straight off our street. The other, the one that is currently there starts a little bit further south, and then you have to face south to turn north, and it can be pretty dangerous. And when they've got families with kids and just anyone, um, we need your help. I asked Mr. Roussel, and he is already taken action on it, but we could use all the help we can get. And then right after that, they started clearing all the neutral grounds. It was, I don't know what that's going to turn up. But as far as the rest, a bridge. We're talking about a bridge. I never heard mention of a tunnel. I've heard that it's not feasible. It's, we can't do it. It'll cost too much money. If it's never been discussed, how do we know? They've got a bridge under the English Channel going over, th going 30 miles from France to England. The Japanese built a, um, an island airport, and they've got an underground tunnel going underneath the ocean going there. And we've only got three un uh, underwater tunnels in the state. There's many more throughout the country, many. And we can't build a short distance like that. A little tunnel, maybe it would cost, but then you have you don't have the large footprint, you don't have to deal with tolls, and we we'll get the federal government involved more. There's pros and cons for each side, bridge and tunnel. That's admittable. Okay, uh, then there's our parish is hurting as a whole, and it's due in a large part to a certain few individuals. There are lawsuits with the DA suing over office space, the council suing to move the office of the office of the parish president, and others. That's a lot of money being tied up. Money that could go for those the, uh, machines that they need for the service department, money that they need for the um, animals, pause for servitude uh, program that is under discussion. There have been political mailings over the past few years, and they're nothing more than shameful attempts to cover up someone else's shortcomings. Some examples. People do change political parties. Incoming politicians do inherit debt and problems. 
there are those who are more educated and better qualified position, for a position than others. People do change their addresses for work. Example, Hillary Clinton. One mentioned lost, uh, that Mr. Comey lost two elections as a Democrat. If you lose in the next election, you lose and then you move on. I seem to recall a rail splitter, Abe Lincoln. He lost a number of elections, but he persisted, he persevered, and he was elected president. And uh, I believe most everybody knows that name worldwide. It's a matter of never quitting. And we can ask Winston Churchill about that too. There's a lot of infighting that goes on. We saw some of that today, even though it was polite infighting. That's to be expected. But there's more than just polite infighting going on. And that's really not uh, doing the parish any good. If any of the above doesn't apply to you, great. If any of the above does apply to you, take it to heart and reevaluate your responsibility to the people that you represent. We have two ears and one mouth, so hopefully we do more of this than we do of that. You've got to listen to the people that you represent. And one last thing, politicians are elected by the people to represent and serve the people, not themselves. Thank you for the time. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Vestudo. Um, let me address the, the highway issue real quick. Am I on? Yeah. Am I on? Yes. Um, on the highway issue, the uh, degrubbing of the, the medium is by the DOTD for drainage purposes. The water was being ponding on the highway and the liability was building for the state, so they decided to go in and uh, degrub and take all of the grass off. And uh, just so happened that I had gotten a complaint about high grass from a constituent on Cedar Drive it said there was high grass on the roadway. And two days later, the state came in and wiped out every blade of grass on the highway. And so it was a coincidence, but they did take it all out. And I did submit, uh, we are requesting the state look at the turnout lane. Uh, on the second item that you discussed about anonymous mailers and all, I can stand up and say that I've been a victim of anonymous mailers for many, many years. And they are cowards who do not put their name on the bottom of a negative mailer, who hide behind other people's money, and it's unconscionable to me for people to do that. I look forward to a debate anytime I enter into a race with anybody who is in the race or out of the race as a constituent to discuss the issues up front and not behind a cloak who sends out anonymous mailers with no signature and act like cowards. So I thank you for your comments on that respect and that's two things that touch me very deeply when I have to pick up the mailbox or my daughter picks up the mail out the mailbox and looks at the mailer and asks me, Dad, why they said this about you and who said that about you? And I can tell her they are cowards and I don't know why they said it. So thank you for those comments. Mr. Bartholomew, you have something? Am I on? Yeah, yes. okay. I agree with the tunnel. Mobile has a beautiful tunnel. Mobile, Alabama. And it's not long as that canal out there. And if you drive, drive through that tunnel, you see how immaculate it is, how kept it, how clean it is, and how magnificent it's designed. And it's provided a service for the people at that cross Mobile Bay. And it's, I'm sure it would be cheaper than building, and also it wouldn't have such a backup of log of trafficking and other, all this other stuff going on. But that's, that, whoever designed and constructed that is the one that you need to, uh, we need to look at if we go that route, or if the state goes that route, not us, but the state. But the tunnel is a very simplified way of solving the problems, and it takes up less space, less property up to, from the, from the uh, residents and the public. The other comments about the questions about the candidates and our responsibility. I am a believer of government for and by the people. And even though we represent single member district because of the governmental procedure policies and procedures, but our overall 
objective should be for the betterment of Plank the Parish and its people that lives here. And we need to understand and we need to provide services, uh, basic services, that is our responsibility to provide to all the people of Plaquemine. And until we understand that, I think we'll have some shortcomings. And until the people understand that as a whole as well, we'll have shortcomings. So we need to really deep down in, invent ourselves of seeing what we are about and what we're trying to get done. That's all I have, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vestuto, and, and I want to thank you for that idea. We're going to put in, um, that's a great idea to put in requests that in the environmental assessment slash environmental impact statement for this proposed uh, new bridge, uh, we're going to request an analysis of a tunnel option. So thank, thank you for that idea. That was, we're, we're learning by, by force a lot about NEPA, so at least we can apply it now to some other areas. Thank you. Okay, I think that takes care of the business. Um, well, let's adopt the minutes, and then we'll go to executive session. Approval of the minutes from the July 26, 2018 meeting. I'll offer. Second. Second by Mr. Bartholomew. Sheen is open. Approval of the minutes passes eight to zero. You read executive session, please. One A one. Byron V. Williams, Senior et al. versus Robert A. Barnett et al. Docket number six four dash six eight one. Division A twenty fifth JDC Parish of Plaquemine, State of Louisiana, Attorney Danny Garrett, Councilmember Williams. Number two. Plaquemines Parish Council versus Plaquemines Parish President. Docket number six four dash zero four seven. Division A. 25th JDC, Pla Parish of Plaquemines, State of Louisiana, Attorney Danny Garrett, Councilmember Williams. Three, Daniel S. Lott versus PPG et al., docket number 64-553, Division B, 25th JDC, Parish of Plaquemines, State of Louisiana, Attorney Danny Garrett, Councilmember Williams. Number four, Logan Lott et al. versus PPG et al., docket number 64-447, Division B, 25th JDC, Parish of Plaquemine, State of Louisiana, Attorney Danny Garrett, Councilmember Williams. Number five, Paula Dove versus PPG at all, docket number 64-358. Division B, 25th JDC, Parish of Plaquemine, State of Louisiana, Attorney Danny Garrett, Councilmember Williams. Number six, Plaquemine's Parish Government versus Emmett Burris, Daniel Scott at all, docket number 63-276, Division A, 25th JDC. Parish of Plaquemine, State of Louisiana, Peter Barbe, Councilmember Lapine. Number seven, Plaquemine's Parish Government versus Daniel Scott Lott, Logan Lott et al. Docket number 63-275, Division B, 25th JDC, Parish of Plaquemine, State of Louisiana, Peter Barbe, Councilmember Lapine. And number eight, Brenda Redock et al. versus Parish of Plaquemine's 25th JDC, case number 48-380, Attorney Shane Landry, Councilmember Trufant Salvant. I'd like to make a motion to move into executive session. Offer. Second. Seconded by Mr. Juno, Lapine, Vitalami. Sheen is open. <laughs> the record reflect we'll move into executive session at 3.39 p.m. I'd like to call the meeting back to order at 4.23 p.m. coming out of executive session with no legal or bonding action. I would like to revert back to um, item five on the agenda, introductions of ordinances and resolutions. I have another one to introduce. An ordinance to amend the 2018 general fund operating revenue budget and fund balance designation of BP settlement and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. And that's all that I have. At this time, 6D. can we move to item 6D, please? 6D, an ordinance to amend the 2018 general fund operating expenditure budget Legal Judgments Department, line items, salaries and wages for settlement of case number 64-358, 25th JDC Division B, authorizing an emergency exception to the hiring freeze, currently enacted on all vacant positions of Plaquemines Parish Government to fund a civil service administrator position and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Councilmember Black. I'll offer an answer. Does anybody have a hard copy of it? That's it. Oh, that's it? Hold on, Nicole, got it.
Councilmember Black, off. Yeah, I'm of off with changes. Uh, on line seven, insert the uh, ten thousand. And then line ten. Yeah, come see Danny. Uh, line ten, also insert ten thousand, and then line eleven. Um, Angie, do you uh, do you have that ordinance in front of you? I know. Yes. Um, what's in line eleven coming from? Where do you want to take it from? Uh, well, we have to. Won't you do that one from under the meter? Put that one from mm. Sorry, honey. Is there any more left? I don't want to do it. One I that know. I took earlier. It's only ten grand. I'd have to call Rochelle. Uh, do you have a second? I don't have any of that with me. Okay. Stand in recess. Well, I got um, section three has it coming from civil service. You want to, you want her to verify that they have it in civil service? I don't know. I think that's what it says. Oh, she's on the phone. That's what it is. Well, I don't know. That's, I, Can you? Okay, but what about it? It states that it's coming from civil service legal fees. Legal judgments general. Oh, legal judgments. The general fund, legal judgments general. Mine is blank. Yeah, mine's blank too. I'm saying, but I'm saying, do, is there enough money in there? In civil service. Because all we would put. No, we would just put um, our legal fees, general. Okay, legal services. Which which line item? I'm talking about the salaries and the civil service. Is there ten thousand uh, dollars in any item in civil service? Come see, Angie. Bring your book up here. I need to call Michelle. Michelle, you want to come? Place. No. This is the money for salary. This is the money for. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We talk about two different funds too. We got one for the salary, for her salary, and then one for the settlement. You were right here. Okay, so we put in ten thousand. You were putting ten here, and it says well, I don't, is from it 10 blank. Here? Uh, that's what you said. Well, let them know. So you, you said 10 here and you said 10 here? Well, I said that, but I don't know if I mean that. Okay. And then you've got... That's 10 as well? But that's for her salaries for the rest of the year. all the money goes. I'm so happy he said that today. What? We're going to take a recess while we discuss this, just for a couple of minutes. All right. Okay, I'd like to call the meeting back to order at 4.35 p.m. We're going to defer item 6D on the agenda. I'd like to revert back to item five, introductions of ordinances and resolutions, and I have another ordinance to introduce. An ordinance to amend the 2018 general fund operating expenditure budget, legal judgments department, line item salaries and wages for settlement of case number 64-358, 25th JDC, Division B, authorizing an emergency exception to the hiring freeze currently enacted on all vacant positions, Plaquemines Parish Government, to fund a civil service administrator position and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. At this time, I'd like to offer a motion to adjourn the meeting. Can I get a second? Second. Oh, what, what, hold on. Oh, hold on. She already, she I introduced that. that. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Can I get a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Roussel. Sheen is open for adjournment. Meeting is adjourned at 4.35 p.m. I don't know. I think that is.